Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All the dimensions of the Holy Spirit revealed in the Bible, they don't work anyhow. They accomplish specific things. Hallelujah. Jesus will give you all the praise. I want to appreciate our passion for the word. I have noticed personally that the Lord is multiplying and increasing our desire and our appetite, not just for Bible study, but for revelation that works. I think that when your heart is opened to know the truth, it says, and ye shall know the truth. And if it is really the truth you know, there will be an evidence that truth can make you free hallelujah it will make you free so you check the liberty you are experiencing in every area of your life that is your liberty is what justifies it validates whether or not the information you are receiving is truth because if it is truth then an aspect of your life should experience that dimension of liberty if I catch the truth about finances, I should experience that liberty. Is that true? If I catch the truth over my victory in Christ, I should see it demonstrated by um, my ability to rise beyond the oppressions of darkness. If I catch the truth concerning my health, it should show. Is that true? If I catch the truth concerning whatever aspect of life. So all you need to do is to look at your life the areas where you still remain a slave and a and in bondage is a is a picture of the dimension of truth that is yet to be real to you and ye shall know not have you can have it forever but it is the day you know it ye shall know the truth and tonight the lord is coming with his truth again truly when you have this revelation you will love the house of god the house of God is the place of truth. Is that true? Yes. The place of truth. So I expect that by the time we are sharing the grace tonight, someone will walk rejoicing. Because something that may have kept you bound for long, all of a sudden you find out that this is the revelation that is needed. Truth. So if you are, have been a faithful follower of God and his word for a long time there should be some level of liberty in your life that is compelling enough to want someone to listen to what you are listening to you can't claim you are around truth for an appreciable period of time and then every area of your life is helplessly in bondage no sir that means you've been around the environment of truth but you have not listened carefully or engaged diligently we have learned that being around the truth does not bring transformation it doesn't even bring liberty the truth personified jesus the word himself there were people who lived with him and ate with him yet they did not change being around the vicinity of truth does not guarantee liberation it doesn't guarantee transformation are we together now lord help me to understand and receive the truth can you pray that one prayer help me understand and ye shall know the truth and the truth that you know that you have received that you have engaged will set you free hallelujah praise the lord we have been examining we started right from last year um, what i would summarize as success systems because i believe that is the will of god for us to rise to excel and the lord has been opening us up to all the dimensions that are prerequisites for a life that becomes a validation of everything jesus said in the bible it is my goal that we excel in every aspect of our life not just in one area at the expense of another hallelujah 
and the Lord helped us to share a lot of things and I just feel stirred in my heart to still share tonight along the side of relationships because I believe that um, our success in life is based on relationships I have grown to appreciate the power of relationships hallelujah I will pick an aspect of it to share today and then he will bless us and then we'll also get into you know when the season February usually are seasons when ministries focus on aspects of relationship not necessarily marriage and love but then I think it's valid for all times if you do not understand relationships you will never prosper in life you will never be victorious it is true it's a fact in all your knowing in all your understanding no matter your business acumen no matter your educational qualification no matter your level of spirituality if you do not understand god's system of relationships then you stand a chance to being a failure and a frustrated personality i've taught us here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships your relationship is a stream of income your relationship greater than any invention the only thing that validates invention is because men are there to appreciate and reward it this is the world of men you have to understand men i watch with shock and wonder how we get whipped over issues that should give us cheap victories because we ignore the systems of god the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships i told us that relationships are currencies they can purchase anything money can buy there are seven currencies we use to purchase realities in this realm that's the lowest and the seventh of them is money financial resources there are many other currencies that are used integrity is currency godliness is currency the anointing is currency relationship is currency anything money can buy relationship can pay for it anything the only thing that gives value money or money value is that there is a hand to collect it and reward you one person can open a hundred doors of opportunity for you sometimes we really don't need so many people in our lives in terms of favor and open doors you just need one person sent by god and will open a door i've taught us that who likes you can make all the difference in your success god has trained us to understand that we do not ignore men and prosper you exalt god above men but you ignore men every prophecy will remain barren in the realm of the spirit even god had to look for men to cooperate with him and he still does till today so who likes you can make a difference a king loved a village girl and she became a queen a king hated a queen and she lost her place god so loved men and they became redeemed it matters who likes you everything reproduces on the basis of relationship everything everything in life your success your failure your spirituality everything in life reproduces adam where are thy i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked what relationship entered between us to make for that who told you it didn't say what happened who told you your neglecting my laws have been because another individual another personality was introduced everything reproduces on the basis of relationships your resources in life your finances your access will always come out of relationships your resources will always come out of relationships i'm just reading with you what i 
as a preamble favor is who God has made to like you and their willingness to communicate benevolence to you favor is who God has made to like you it's amazing how your life can change when the right people like you it's true the Bible is full of hedonistic kings who fell in love with certain individuals like Pharaoh to Joseph and all of a sudden their lives changed like Daniel in Babylon two men had this, a similar dream and for one person it meant the favor of the king he was restored as the wine presser for another person it was death and they hung him and the birds of the air ate him up but I've taught us again that relationships don't maintain themselves this is the most important part of my conversation relationships don't maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it any kind it doesn't just have to be love relationships marriage or this no no any kind business relationships your relationship between you and the holy spirit your relationship between you and your friends you and parents love relationships marriages business career relationships no relationship maintains itself the parties involved doesn't matter how many they must commit to maintaining it and the holy spirit stirred in my heart to teach us a dimension today of relationships that i think will really really bless us there are not many times when i stand and i tell you that a teaching will bless you if tonight's teaching does not bless you something is really wrong with your understanding hallelujah i title what i'm about to share what is love understanding relationships what is love this this is not about um love relationships necessarily at all it's, it's more serious than that it's a subject that god has is something that god has reveal to me that i think the body of christ needs to understand what is love jeremiah chapter 31 i love i love verse 3 i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. It says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Please read with me yea i have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have i drawn you this is god speaking i have loved you with an everlasting love the basis of my relating with you is love it took my loving kindness to draw you to myself to receive of my benevolence now it is this love that we want to consider what is love john chapter 3 verse 16 very popular scripture many of us have not read it for a long time because of our pride of believing we know what it says john 3 16 for god read the first the third and the fourth word one to read so loved so loved that's the key word forget about what he did later on the foundation for anything that was done so loved i have loved you with an everlasting love and in my loving kindness i have drawn you to myself and the bible says for god so loved the world 
whatever he did is a subject of another day the most important thing you can say he gave his only begotten son because he so loved the world are you seeing that now the foundation for his benevolence and his sacrifice was the extent of his love love is a word that is used greatly in our world today and in our society we attach it to our affection our affinity for things you hear people say i love you i love my car i love my boss i love my wife i love my husband i love my children i love jesus i love koinonia is that true and so we it's a word it's not a word that is new or strange even foreign even little children will tell you they have an idea we have always associated love with something that is positive but i just want to help us because knowing this will turn every aspect of our lives around not just relationships finances our work with the holy spirit and so on and so forth is a word that in many respects is carelessly used many people do not understand the gravity of what they are saying i love you or i love your shirt i love this phone i love this book i love jesus christ i love my wife my husband i love my father and for many of us and i think largely our society um societally speaking we are victims of this every time we mention the word love usually the scope of our understanding please listen the scope of our understanding is hinged around the emotions or attachment we use the word love from a layman's perspective many people just use it to explain the goodness the positive attachment is that true that they have towards a person or towards a thing so for many people the scope of love is just emotions or a word we have invented to explain it feelings feelings so when you feel good about a thing or a person and you are asked to articulate what is happening to you you say i love that thing i love this flower why you say because it is beautiful the design made it pleasant to my eyes and then i have a positive affinity towards it and i call it love but you see i want to share with us a number of things that will help us ready number one true love is not emotions true love is not emotions it's not feelings now don't get me wrong there is an emotional component when you are talking about love there has to be an emotional component but love is not emotion if the entire scope of your definition of love for a person or for a thing is just an attempt to express the emotional affinity towards that thing then you are very limited please listen there is a lot of trouble in marriages in relationships in carnality attachment to things because of this one definition feelings the word feeling is a very is a psychological word it's a word that was invented to explain your psychological disposition at a given time it's called feelings an expression of your psychological disposition so if i i am not feeling all right because of a for instance a stomach upset you ask me what's wrong and i tell you i'm feeling sick is that true if someone annoys me and i am not happy you ask me what was wrong with you i say i'm feeling bad so the word feeling is a word that attempts to describe your psychological disposition at a given time is god helping us tonight please make sure you are listening everywhere online outside because one of the biggest unbecomings of people 
is their vulnerability to feelings for when you become a victim of feelings both your relationship with god and your relationship with life will be shattered because you see feelings listen love is not a feeling love is not emotion love can and should create feelings true love should create feelings don't get me wrong true love should create emotions we'll discuss that later without without emotions and without feelings you cannot be committed towards a person or a project I preach and we run this ministry and do what God is doing because much more than an instruction from God I'm emotionally connected to what I'm doing and therein lies my passion for the work I'm doing without feeling without emotion there is no basis for being passionate but love is not feeling are we together love can create feelings but it's not feelings we know from life and biology that feelings can be products of chemical reactions hormones feelings can be products of whatever it is all kinds of um, physiological things that happen within a human being that is the reason why love that is based on feelings should not be trusted is that true when you build your love life based on emotions and feelings you will never be able to sustain that's why many people do not have the strength to push a business idea to the end they say they love it because the idea reflected a positive emotion to them is that true and so they believe that they love the idea but then when another idea came to them higher and better than that one all of a sudden their loyalty to that idea went and it is easier for it to be a thing it is terrible when it becomes a person is that true we live in a world where our definitions of love are based on feelings so when you feel good about a person you say i love that person and for many of us now i say this with honor we have watched films we have been exposed to books and we have even been mentored by personalities who have been so inclined to emotions and the entire scope of their definition of love is that it must always give you a feeling a positive feeling and if for any reason the feeling is not positive then it is not love that is not an accurate teaching is God helping us so if I say come I love David Dam what for many of us are saying uh, what we are trying to say is that my sight of David Dam it doesn't matter what parameters I put together to arrive at my idea of love what I'm attempting to say is that the presence of David Dam creates a positive emotional um, experience for me is that true and then i can be fooled into thinking that just because at the moment i felt positive about him i love him then tomorrow i now see another side of david dam that communicates an experience that does not go well with my idea of happiness is that true and all of a sudden i change my mind and say david dam i no longer love you remember that's what you did to the shirt you now throw in your house see how much you loved it when you bought it beautiful shirt my god and you wore it and you were happy something about that shirt made you feel happy and excited and you used the wrong word you called it love and now because the shirt began to fade or tear it started falling your hand and you no longer were confident about it because it no longer created that disposition confess right now what did you do to the shirt isn't it amazing how your attitude towards that shirt has changed you look at it in your wardrobe 
and have no pity for that shit. Think of how much you were bargaining just a few months ago. Please reduce 1,000, reduce 5,000. And this is the shirt now. But you said you loved the shirt. Remember when you dried it and for whatever reason you didn't find it. You searched, who took my shirt? But now the shirt is right there. Love. What exactly is love? Feelings are always based I wrote something here feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant feelings write it down feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant about someone or an object so if David Dam sings watch this I give David Dam a mic and he has a beautiful voice now when he raises that voice his flawlessness his vocal discipline his artistry the ability to coordinate himself musically sounds pleasant to me that gives me a basis for feeling right about David Dam is that correct and now I may be tempted to call that feeling love it remains love for as long as David Dam is singing what if he's sleeping what is the name of the experience the difference between singing and snoring they all make sounds one is coordinated one is not so this, they are all coming out from the same person that's the interesting thing all coming out from the same personality now one is coordinated please understand what I'm teaching you and then it is pleasant to you and he becomes likable all of a sudden you are drawn emotionally based on something now most of us may not admit that that's what is drawing us is that true and then the person now snores for instance and then that experience does not go well with your disposition and you begin to lose that fervor our world is in danger of losing it if we do not understand what love is I foresee that if we do not know what love is many marriages will break many relationships will not even exist many businesses will never grow to be big enough many ministries many leaders will not be able to rise because of this mistake of feelings building anything on just feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration please hear what i'm saying building anything at all just based on feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration when you build a business on feeling when you build a relationship on feeling when you build marriage on feeling when you build your work with god on feeling when you build your spiritual growth process on feeling that's what makes a lot of believers start feeling bad i used to feel the presence of god in a way when i'm about to climb the stage i feel that thing when i feel it i know god is there and right now i'm about to pray for sick people and i don't seem to feel it and they believe god is not there with me because we have been trained we don't ignore feelings but feeling is not love feeling has brought a lot of people into trouble there are marriages that are in trouble today because of the mistake of feeling listen carefully there are relationships today that are in shambles because of feeling there are businesses there are careers there are people today who are in geographic regions that they should never be ask them what happened they say i felt so there are people who should never be close to certain personalities there are people who should never be involved in certain businesses it's like an emotional rampage feelings they drive us up and down and so we begin to vacillate based on whatever disposition we have at the moment when a revelation sounds good to you ah, this is wonderful and then you love the revelation so you say 
Then the day you understand the gravity of that revelation and it does not go well with you, you throw it away. Love is not feelings. Is God helping us? There are many things in life that have capacity. Please look up. There are many things in life that have capacity of creating positive emotional experiences for us. Looks can create that. You know that? When you see a guy or a lady or whatever individual or a thing, once it is good looking, it can create a positive experience for you education when you see someone who is well learned someone who has been able to acquire certifications of all kinds they have a way of creating a positive disposition is that true um appearance when you see someone looking sharp and looking nice beautiful and handsome when i stepped in and i saw our worship team they were all looking gorgeous wonderful people right from outside i saw our ushers too they were looking beautiful i had a positive disposition towards them are you following me now orientation when you see someone who is exposed vast intelligent he has a great command of his intellect well developed understanding about several aspects of life and the person has an opportunity to articulate his understanding before you naturally naturally you will be drawn towards the person there are other things like wealth finances finances have the capability of creating pleasant experiences why because they are able to be exchanged for a solution you desire you can exchange money for a solution that you desire could be medically could be spiritually you can use money to buy a bible you can use money to move from being a tenant to a landlord it can give you a lot of options godliness and spirituality when you find out that someone has a very high level of understanding with god that disposition can cause pleasantness but none of those things in themselves equate to love is god helping us because you see many of our marriages many of our relationships many of our businesses are hinged on physical things that were pointed out and used as references to mean what we call today love so when you meet the gentleman and say why do you love this lady he says because she is beautiful or because she has character or because she did whatever it is why do you love this gentleman he said he's responsible he loves god doesn't run around he's well cultured and he's visionary those things look very sincere and they are but that's not love are we together why do you love this intelligent entrepreneur oh this guy is very sharp his business acumen is sound the result he has has to show for it why do you love this course you are studying i love it because i was told there is an opportunity there i love it because my father tried to study it and it didn't work now you think that those things mean love they are positive don't get me wrong but they are wrong foundations for love because if your foundation is based on those things there will be serious trouble how many of you have seen an old man and an old woman maybe the old woman maybe 65 to 70 years and her old husband is wrinkled sitting on a wheelchair and you see them hold their hands and say we love ourselves talk to me intelligent people we feel emotionally drawn to ourselves is that what you believe they are saying it couldn't be we make a fool of ourselves because of the impulsive nature of our lives which has been a derivative of our idea about love that every time i have a positive disposition towards a thing or a person then I love the thing or the person. And whenever that positive feeling is not there, we now say, I do not love the person. 
that's not God's idea that's not the definition of love hallelujah mm. the Bible says those that God loves he chastises how do you how do you equate chastening with love impulsive marriages impulsive businesses impulsive relationships impulsive career pathways and all these mood swings that come in life are products of dependence on feelings to make destiny decisions there are people i remember talking to a lady one or was it a gentleman one day and he came and met me he said i want to read a course i said why he said because i like the name that's exactly what we're talking about are we together chemical engineering <laughs> architecture neurosurgeon aeronautic engineer you know so the name is, is is charismatic and we do not understand the gravity of what is involved and we subscribe for things that we start regretting from day one is that true many people have been whipped by the sad reality that they were not ready for what they subscribed for this happens in relationships it happens in businesses listen if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight i promise you you will walk out here happy and you will live happy as far as relationships are concerned feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love write it down feelings can be deceptive feelings all kinds feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love ask any married man and married woman ask any mother and her children ask every father and the children ask any leader and his subordinates they will tell you that if you depend on feelings as an index to measure love you will be deceived many times there are times that you are having the greatest manifestation of the presence of god in your life and you will not feel nothing but at those times your relationship and work with god are to incredible proportions but because you have programmed yourself into believing that because you felt his presence and he shook your body that meant you were receiving an impartation how many people walk out of miracle services angry because they did not have a feeling they expected to fall down is the noise maker who was sitting close to them that was not even prepared in his spirit who was falling up and down and they go back feeling pained and disappointed and say lord you mean you watch me like this fasting i didn't even break and this guy who was gossiping and making noise from praise and worship he was already on the ground we convinced ourselves that because there was no feeling that accompanied your experience that your senses could relate with you didn't receive anything it's the reason why many people don't get filled with the holy spirit because they are waiting for feelings feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love are feelings wrong no are emotions wrong no but our society many of you seated today looking at me are depending on a feeling to show you your wife you are depending on a feeling to show you your husband you are depending on a feeling to love your wife if you're married or a feeling to love your husband you are depending on a feeling to serve god you are depending on a feeling to believe that you are loved in your department you are you are depending on a feeling feelings are deceptive very deceptive before i tell you what love is i want to show you a scripture that blessed me dimensions of true love let's discuss that ephesians chapter 3 please from verse 17 and 18 it's amazing how paul gives us his exegesis on the subject of love 
very strange communication that came from Paul and let's see what he's saying Paul said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith look at me listen that ye been rooted and grounded in love now Paul is confusing us here Paul is giving us an idea you know he's using agricultural terminologies but this is not where I'm going verse 18 he says may be able to comprehend with all the saints read on with me what is the number one the breath number two the length number three the depth number four the height so love has these dimensions there is breath there is length there is depth there is height have you experienced these dimensions in your definition of what you call love if i ask you what is the breath of love and when should it be used because it's in the bible if i ask you what is the length of love and when should it be used because all these dimensions have their relevance remember he's teaching us to grow in the fullness of god who is love and he's fragmenting this dimensionally and he's saying that love has breadth and length and depth and height which one of the four do you know when you say love which of them do you refer to my brother when you say i love that lady which of this is it the breadth the length the depth when you say i love jesus which of them because paul is saying if that thing you are doing or know is love it must have breath listen carefully it must have length it must have depth thank you media it must have height believers lovers remember we love god and love ourselves what is the name of what we have been doing with respect to this i love you I love my car and Paul says that thing you are talking there are dimensions the first dimension write it down I want to give you the four dimensions the Lord revealed this to me and it changed my life it really did if these four dimensions are not captured in your idea of love then never talk about it these four dimensions I'm about to describe for you if they are not captured all four must be captured for it to be called love three over four in this equation is still f it must be four over four to be called god's idea the dimensions of love ready number one passion the first dimension of love is passion there is no love if it cannot be expressed in passion that's why i told you that there is a place for feelings it's only that feelings is not the entire scope please follow me in this teaching god is going to be revealing to many of us the mistakes we have been making whether in love relationships even in marriages and our work with god and businesses and relationship among believers around passion what is passion a strong or extravagant fondness of something when you are strongly fond of something it can be said you are passionate about that person or that thing what is passion sorry i'll hurry up you can get the teachings enthusiasm or desire for someone or something your passion for a person or a thing is measured by your enthusiasm your desire for something you cannot say you love a person or you love a thing and intrinsically there is no desire passion is called an intense enthusiasm compelling desire even admiration qualifies to be called passion write this down 
the proof that you are passionate about a person or a thing is pursuit 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 is the proof of passion when you love someone and you love something you are willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue that personality to pursue that idea there cannot be passion when there is an ashamedness for pursuit towards God towards men there are many relationships and many marriages many business ideas that do not have passion attached so the individuals they may say that they love this um, line of business but I do not see pursuit they may say I love this lady I love this guy but there is no desire for pursuit many say I love Jesus I love the things of God but there is no pursuit the first dimension of love that must be at work in your life is pursuit Psalm 8 please quickly let's look at God himself demonstrating this dimension of love Psalm 8 and verse 3 this is the psalmist in shock and awe as to why the God of the heavens with all the dexterity of heaven will still look down at man remember the Bible said for God so loved the world I have loved you we are not studying love from any relationship expert we are studying love directly from the one who invented it himself because many people have carved out i have great honor and respect for people authorities that god has used in the area of love and relationship but there is a deception that is destroying the body of christ every angry person comes up with a book and any idea of what they believe and begin to mentor young guys and young ladies and we are destroying marriage visions dreams relationships because of wrong templates that have been communicated so let's go to God how did God express passion this is what the psalmist saw that made him wonder he said God is it that you cannot do without man you threw your pride on the ground your throne is not enough for you you look at a man that is so godless and doesn't love you he said when i consider the heavens do you know what he's saying lord you are not dull you made the heavens without pillars the works of your fingers can't you invent another thing to replace that man the moon and the stars which thou has ordained verse 4 we're reading to verse 5 what is man that thou art change mindful to passionate ready what is man that thou art passionate not the son of man that you prove you are passionate by doing what visiting him you leave your throne you are not even considering whether people will say how about god you are too big for this childishness he said no problem say whatever you say about me i am in love with that man and the first dimension is my passion i am not ashamed let's go back to our world of proud and arrogant people where a guy claims he loves a lady but he is still protecting his vulnerability you are not passionate you are not in love where somebody claims he loves a business he loves his idea i love this i love that i am a businessman and you are not serious i don't see you wake up in the night to read any book i don't see you go for any seminar you are not passionate you do not love it the first dimension of love is measured by your passion and your passion measured by your willingness to pursue without being embarrassed anything that shame will not let you pursue don't even start shame and love doesn't go hand in hand no matter who you are in the world of god's idea of love you must be willing to throw shame down to pursue a person an idea or pursue god when we were sitting here and the worship team were praising i saw a jimmy got up and he was dancing unashamedly is a proof of passion is that true 
listen be careful whenever someone says he loves you or she loves you or you think you love someone before you make a shipwreck of your life because of ignorance ask yourself question number one am i willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue i have loved you with an everlasting love and my everlasting love was demonstrated by my being mindful lord there are many things to distract you in heaven the beauty of heaven the throne room the four and twenty elders and after he watches that orchestra in heaven all of a sudden they find god thinking and the elders can wonder god what again and he says man scene two here is the stubborn and careless man roaming around trying to make a, a an image and bow to him and the angel said george now george god you are wise and he says no i'm not ashamed that as great as i am god is a weak point man has gotten this is god listen don't ever marry anybody who doesn't have this thing i'm telling you big manism and passion cannot go hand in hand show me what wakes you in the night and i know whether that idea is worth your love what wakes you up you snore by 10 and wake up by 11 say i'm an entrepreneur it's not for you it's very clear that you don't have passion for that thing you can try other aspects of life lord i love you and you are praying and then fall asleep and sleep for 10 hours no when you are mindful of anything there is passion there is god helping us tonight learn this this is the spirit of wisdom speaking to you we use words carelessly and do not understand the gravity of what we are saying lord i love you he says which dimension is that dimension number one i love you i am passionate towards you i am not ashamed of my vulnerability oh david showed us what passion was he danced before god and the wife said uh -uh, oh king again were you not trained well david said god that took me from the backside i should not dance before him god had it and god said you dare not stop anyone who is passionate about me number two what is the second dimension of love commitment write it down the second dimension of love there is no love i've not defined love oh. we are just describing the dimensions love is commitment everybody shout commitment. commitment do you know what commitment is commitment is the willingness to give your time the willingness to give your energy the willingness to give yourself to something or someone you believe in is called commitment the willingness to give your time the willingness to give yourself passion talks of pursuit the unashamedness to remain mindful of a thing but commitment talks of the staying power brothers and sisters there is no emotion to commitment commitment is a product of your belief in a thing staying power based on the fact that you believe so you can see a believer being persecuted and they are going to set fire on him and he's willing lord i remain with you denounce jesus christ or die is is there any pleasure there no sir listen to me commitment is a state or quality of being dedicated another synonym for commitment is dedication i know how committed you are to a person or a thing by dedication i wrote a definition that when i finished writing i finished writing it i just leaned my head and i took a deep breath and i said god this is serious hear this the third definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action hi you must write everything let me say it again 
an engagement or obligation to someone or something that restricts freedom of action look at this kind of dangerous definition so there is a restriction that commitment can create to your life mm. the love of god constrains constrains there are actions that are restricted because of commitment you have options you can sleep you have options you can travel you have options you can go for vacation but your commitment for your vision because you believe that if you are committed to that vision your children will eat from it so you stay and they look at you and say ah, ah david damn what is this that you are playing the keyboard 2 a.m 2 a.m you are tired you say it's true it's obvious your eyes are teary but something else has obsessed you more than the discomfort you are having commitment there are many believers who are not committed to anything there are many young people who are not committed to anything and anyone we run away from commitment i'm a member of koinonia but i don't want to join any workforce that's how i am do you know why because the restriction that commitment brings is what we are afraid of restriction is God blessing us number three let's hurry up the third dimension to love when we get to the fourth dimension you give us that scripture again in Ephesians the third dimension to love is pleasure write it down if you must manifest true love it must be captured this dimension pleasure what is pleasure delight gratification there must be delight there must be space for gratification what is pleasure the satisfaction derived from what is to one's liking it cannot be a war of pain and regrets and fighting and pursuit indefinitely no there is a dimension to love that is defined by pleasure psalm 16 verse 11 let me tell you something that is very interesting about love personified here's what the bible says 16 verse 11 psalms are we there it says thou will show me the path of life ready in your presence is what fullness of joy and then he didn't say in the hand of a 24 elder at your right hand are what for how long if your definition of love is all about pain and fight and it there is no capture of the dimension of pleasure then you are not defining love based on God's terms is God speaking to us yes whether it is a love relationship whether it is a business relationship I should come and see you working on a difficult project with a smile on your face and I should say ah, ah, but I'm aware this thing is hard you mean you have to count these things one by one and there are five thousand of them and you say even me I don't know why this thing gives me joy my brother continue that's a sign that there is love there there are many things we do and we are angry and frowning at it relationships career even work with God brothers and sisters do we not rejoice after we love God we celebrate miracles here in his presence he makes sure that the dimension of delight is featured in our serving him is delight and pleasure featured in your idea of relationship there are husbands and wives there are people in relationships where there is completely no joy and laughter and delight at all there may be passion there may be commitment but there's no delight no jokes no laughter especially for we who are very visionary people it's a side effect that comes with being visionary sometimes we can strangle every iota 
of pleasure from our lives i have found myself many times being unfair even to myself in this regard because of the enormous responsibilities that i have over my life and over people i'm always thinking but the bible says even god laughs from his throne are we together the bible says laughter do it good like medicine pleasure must be captured there are times that i've been involved in ideas involved in things and i've enjoyed the beauty and the joy of triumph your business should make you laugh one day your pursuit of the anointing should make you laugh one day if you continue being angry indefinitely it can be a voice that this thing is not for you there must be a time of laughter your relationship must give you laughter one day no sir from january last year till january this year you have been meeting with the lady or the guy no laughter no feeling of relaxation and happiness what 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 sort of a, a... <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm trying to be very careful so i don't double directly into relationship issues are you deriving satisfaction from your pursuit now let me tell you something if there is no pleasure in what you are loving you will feel cheated if there is no pleasure if i sit down and i'm doing ministry as god has anointed me to i there are pleasurable moments in ministry people sow into my life people bless me i have the privilege of enjoying honor you all love me and respect me so much and i'm deeply grateful for that those are the fringe benefits is the pleasure dimension of love i love god with all my heart i've seen his favor upon my life i've seen him shower me with blessings that if he never blesses me again i am deeply grateful there must be pleasure captured in your idea of love this is a challenge to visionary people this is a challenge to spiritual ladies hello spirituality is not an insult but we have found ourselves victims there are sisters that are spiritual they love god they don't know the inconvenience they are creating they strangle this third dimension of love intentionally as proof they feel so ashamed when there is an atmosphere of relaxation there are believers that frown at dinners there are believers that frown at any opportunity to relax and do this no no don't do this there are more important things they say is wrong there are fathers that will not allow this incorporated in their family there are mothers that will not allow this incorporated oh we just feel like getting two chickens just to cut no occasion see that's why it's part of my reservation about things like valentine because they are not exactly sincere <laughs> most of the things that are done around this period are just emotions they are not revelations so someone that had no there's no iota of being nice suddenly changes for two days or four days that experience should not be desired because it will not continue Am, am i against valentine no no do your thing but i'm just telling you that this is the revelation there is a pleasure dimension to life that's the reason why i came to serve god i came to preach in koinonia i didn't come to drink water however they know that there is a dimension of love that must be captured and they kept me a bottle of water how grateful i am for this hallelujah there are believers who don't know what the bible calls the joy of salvation say it after me the joy of salvation brothers and sisters there is joy in salvation if that experience has not been featured in your life vet what you did that you called born again or vet the atmosphere you are submitting your spiritual understanding to i detest a life that is just full of passion and commitment and then pleasure is not captured how about schools that flood children alone there's no opportunity they are either reading or serving punishment that's how many of us were raised 
that's how many of us were raised our families did not have provision you are sleeping you are praying you are reading or you are walking break time they give you 10 minutes now it looks like it's a nice thing but it's destructive go and ask the most productive people and corporations they create scenarios and force the people to have times when their minds can relax is God helping us capture this capture this they met Jesus with little children as visionary as he is and then the serious disciples say Abba Jesus you are soon to die remember all of this this and Jesus mm, please carry your let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such most adults who say these are children please Jesus let's focus on what matters Jesus said I don't know what you are talking about there was a time they saw him with prostitutes and people he was not preaching he was eating with them cracking jokes and laughing if this is not featured in our lives somewhere we are missing it men of God listen to me spiritual brothers and sisters listen to me your service and your spirituality should not strangle the trouble becomes when your entire life is defined by pleasure your whole life revolves around the impulses of pleasure you are back to the feelings we are talking about yeah na 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 yeah na 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 hallelujah i was told the other day that the worship team went for an aerobic session i was so blessed you would think all they do is to pray there was a time i think the prayer department were having was it a seminar or something like that and that's why after service you should not stop people from those brief moments where they are how are you that's why we crack jokes in the middle of the service even if it's a miracle service doesn't matter whose problem you have your medical reports but talk to your neighbor tell them i love you say god bless you that's why after service i say hug someone and say something some of you as soon as the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god you frown your face you go and stand outside listen i respect your commitment to vision but you are robbing yourself and god and your environment of this dimension of love friendliness this dimension let's hurry up number four if god is helping you say amen, amen. the fourth dimension of love is sacrifice sacrifice the length the breadth the height the depth of the love of god it is these compositions that make the fullness of god's love what is sacrifice giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause you must give up something if you want to fulfill the last dimension of love sacrifice talks of constraint sacrifice talks of inconvenience very uncomfortably sometimes sacrifice talks of pain hmm. a language our generation does not know again pain constraint the inconveniences that if need be you may have to go through because of someone or a cause that you consider to be nobler please look up i have mentioned four parameters ready what's number one passion what's number two commitment what's number three pleasure what's number four sacrifice sacrifice is sacrifice featured in your idea of love love for your vision love for your assignment brothers and sisters we are all happy right now enjoying what god is doing here but how many of you know that since as early as maybe sometimes seven in the morning work is already going on in cgc here 
prayer department members came by uh, four four o'clock praying for at least one hour for this meeting the worship team here several people you came and found seats arranged already you came and found the seats clean sometimes during the rainy season you see the pain as soon as you share the grace you are going to hug one another and go back every week i leave this place past 12 the next day past 12 because i have to spend an extra one or two hours standing the moment i come for koinonia i sit down only for a few minutes once i get up standing it is until i leave while you are sitting i'm standing sometimes during the workers retreat i am standing from at, at about nine sometimes till evening or night and afterwards i may still have to counsel people and go back show me your sacrifice as a proof of love show me the sacrifice you are doing for that sister as a proof that you love her show me the sacrifice you are doing for that brother show me the sacrifice you are doing for your wife your husband your children if there is no sacrifice there is no love love is measured by sacrifice not sacrifice alone but it is an index i look at parents and i see how they care for their children i look at other parents i see how irresponsible they are over their children oh we need school fees or we need something uh, sorry i need to do something and they say i love you no sir lord i love you and then you want to give offering you came with two thousand you remove hundred naira and return it back you remove 50 naira and return it back then you remove the old 20 naira and god is watching saying is that what you call love sacrifice These people are standing every single one of them i'm here preaching you are here enjoying and male and female they are standing if we stand during koinonia vigils they are standing when they get tired they go back to rest a bit some of the people come sacrifice believers don't understand the language of sacrifice every little inconvenience there's no ac there's no this there's no this sacrifice the sacrifice of waking up in the night whether it's convenient or not to pray the sacrifice to pursue and study the sacrifice to delay gratification with your finances god gave you one small one or two million instead of blowing it to live a fake life you say let me pay the price and sacrifice this so that my children will eat what i did not eat sacrifice how many selfish parents i'm sorry to say it with all due respect they saw the future of the children they saw their present they would have paid a price some of us would have been happy now but they chose their belly at the expense of a generation they had the opportunity to have bought the land in 1964 1974 just buying the land without developing it instead of going for one polo club competition they would have used that money to buy the land that single land would have been over 100 million today and they would have been able to train everybody empower their young men support their sisters but selfishness and they look at you and say children i love you no wonder the resentment rises in many young people for their parents there is no sacrifice you hardly will hate someone or a thing that sacrifices how many leaders claim they love their people how many pastors claim they love their members there is no index to measure sacrifice everything that is an inconvenience goes to the members the convenience comes to the pastor no sir a true shepherd lays down does not walk on his sheep lays down what are you laying down for your wife what are you laying down for your husband what are you laying down for that come darling for that lady you want to get married to what are you laying down for the guy you want to get married to his birthday is coming well let me put something small you call him hello sir your your birthday is coming can you give me the money to cook for you is that sacrifice is that sacrifice Is that sacrifice 
how many of our parents claim that they love a student or they love whatever they come into a city where you are there carry out a business transaction cannot even drop a small envelope is when they leave they say i came there there is no sacrifice sacrifice is not about convenience so do not expect it to be convenient there are times both for god and men it will inconvenience you ask any married man there are times when a straight betwixt between your child's school fees and another equally important thing but you may have to lay it down bless god for some of our mothers that will not buy one wrapper for five years so that their children will eat now that's love to me bless god for some of our fathers who would rather pack the car and not take 400,000 to buy a new gearbox. He says that 400,000 can sponsor my children. Let me send them to school. Not so that they will feed me back when they are graduates. That's investment. That's not love. Are we together? Our generation does not understand the language of sacrifice. Sister, let me tell you, you are not a good wife if you don't understand sacrifice unfortunately you know i love our sisters but there is a deception that is looming across the horizon where many ladies believe everything about relationship is all about their pleasure and enjoyment anything that has to do with a little sacrifice they frown and revolt and rebel no how about brothers who think because you are a celebrity figure because you are this you are a graduate you are working in an oil and gas company and all these things are happening you want the lady to worship you forever because you are this somebody is lying to somebody somewhere sacrifice sacrifice how many businessmen cannot make sacrifice for their future how many young men i look at some not, not necessarily here i look around and i see young people that i know don't have anything much i see what they are wearing i watch their shoes even a millionaire is not wearing that kind of shoe and i ask them what do you have in saving them nothing and that person wants to marry and that person is looking at a lady he loves or a guy that he loves how many ladies carry their future and use it to make themselves beautiful today no sacrifice people are poor not just because the devil is powerful this sacrifice is what we lack in our generation hallelujah you are considering a relationship or you are considering marriage or you are married please don't go into it it's not a sin be ready for sacrifice first there are men who will come back with salary and ask their wives my wife can can you give this person twenty thousand? whereas you have your own one million let's tell ourselves the truth and it starts from relationship sacrifice these four dimensions are the dimensions that spell love give us ephesians chapter 3 again ephesians chapter 3 let's hurry up verse 18 that you will be able to comprehend with all the saints and that includes the family of koinonia what is the passion and the commitment and the pleasure and the sacrifice dimensions that are involved the bible calls these dimensions the fullness of the love of god i want you to look at this carefully which dimension so when you say brother i love you or sister i love you or destiny i love you or jesus i love you my question again is which one of them all of them jesus i have pleasure towards you and the things you can give me he says wonderful how about sacrifice for me how about commitment for me no i don't have those ones let me show you a secret brothers and sisters that will give you an opportunity to enjoy your marriage your relationship your vision whether you are born again or not 
if you subscribe to these four templates on anything you will succeed in it it's true some of the best i've studied some of the top business entrepreneurs around the world this they subscribe to this template they may not acknowledge jesus don't just look at their results look at their passion look at their commitment look at the pleasure they derive from what they are doing no matter how cumbersome and then look at the sacrifices i i studied one one particular businessman and when i saw what that guy went through i said compared to what he went through i still think that the world still should reward him his name is nikola tesla tesla is one of the genesis had about 700 patents to his honor he lived a secluded life of sacrifice creating the inventions today that we accredit to different people it was the product of the pain of that man didn't get married in his life didn't do a lot of things began to research many of he was light years ahead of humanity and he died living his blessing sacrifice I watch Miles Monroe's videos great mentor in life and in death I see how that that man cheated death he's long gone but his wisdom still guides us there is illumination the touch from his experiences guide us towards a great destiny what are you willing to lay down for the anointing you claim you want what are you willing to lay down for the kind of lady you are praying for what are you willing to lay down sister for the kind of husband you are praying for it is free but it's not cheap you must be willing to lay down something lord i want a visionary guy i want somebody who loves god god says they are all available let me see what you are willing to lay down can you lay down the time the ego the inconvenience will you be able to submit to such a man with gladness as one who is worthy of your honor for his paradigm Oh Lord, I have my own ego. I don't want to be cheap. And God says, all right, go and find men who are like you. But if it's my son you want, you must be serious. Oh Lord, I want this lady. Beautiful, gorgeous, whatever parameters you use. And God says they are available. But gentlemen, let me see what you are willing to lay down. A lady who is that virtuous deserves a responsible man. A lady who is that virtuous, God will tell you, deserves a blessed man. If you consider that lady to be priceless enough, then you must rise to the occasion. We have this pride in our world that all fingers are equal. It's a lie. That includes human beings. Sister, there are some kinds of brothers God will never give you the way you are. It's not a bad talk. It is true. God is not a fool. He gave unto his one five talents. Two. This is God oh, who is not unjust. God is not unjust. But he gives one five talents. I talk to brothers. And sometimes when I hear brothers, I ask them question, what kind of sister do you want? When they describe that lady, I look at the brother and I know he's joking. I already know his prayer will not be answered because God is not a fool. If you want the level of qualitative sister you are making for, you, because God will not yoke people unequally. No, sir. Lord, I want a ministry like Benny Hinn. And God says, really? Are you willing to do what Benny Hinn is doing? That for two weeks he can close himself and nobody will see him. At the beginning of a new year, the first seven days, nobody sees him. Drive fast, he's alone with God, accessing power. Don't let the suit deceive you. If you want to marry Benny Hinn, you must be able to be like him. Otherwise, you'll be unequally yoked. You will carry pleasure into the relationship. And Benny Hinn will say, you love that Benny Hinn came from this secret place. It's amazing how people revolt when they see the demands for their desires. I want prosperity. Oh God, I want to be blessed. I'm a millionaire in Jesus' name. And God says, no problem. Millionaires from me must be able to say yes, sir, to every instruction I give. Agreed? Yes. Give the only one million in your account. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, you had me. You want me to bless you. You want me to talk to someone else who is like you. To send 10 million to your account. Prove to me 
you are worthy to be my treasurer by answering me every time i speak to you you would think is the kind of abraham's test that god will say stop till your internet transfer does send is gone and then your balance is one naira or five naira and you would think god will talk to the person to send it back it's gone and brothers and sisters two months after that giving you feel like dying and you say lord but i'm not lazy it took me three years to save this one million and the heavens become silent you think god is not watching he's looking one day this god one day you are sitting somewhere that is not your business and someone will come and say there is a contract somewhere um do you have a company yes i have but we are not what do you do i sell clothes leave clothes Jare, come and he gives you something and all of a sudden millions enter your account and people say it's not fair say go and ask him what is not fair about it don't be angry when you see god lifting people find out what they are doing the blood that drips from their altar is what attracts the attention of heaven when you see a man of god sometimes you people just hear me talk oh the power of god is this and people are shouting it's not magical my brother find out what my secret place is don't don't claim i say it he is grace but we are not stupid there is a sacrifice on that altar you see don't just think you get up and touch somebody because the bible says bless no there is a sacrifice we honor jesus among other reasons because he hung on that cross brothers and sisters i hope you know there was no covering around him it's just films that put it because children will be watching too that 33 year old man was hung naked on the cross his only covering was blood he would have stopped it but he said this is the price for that throne so don't you dare insult that throne that's why every demon must answer when you invoke the power in that throne you don't know what he went through The highest and noblest expression of true love is sacrifice. It's not the only one, but it is sacrifice. Pray one minute over these four things. We are still going to continue. Pray while you are seated. Please pray. How nang Allah. She never been in Salama. She never been in Allah. She never been Salama. Pray, Lord, give me the grace that passion be captured in my definition of love. Let me be passionate about something. Let me be passionate about my wife. Let me be passionate about my husband. Let's be sincere and tell us ourselves the truth. Are you passionate about the business? Are you passionate about God? Are you committed to the sister? Are you committed to the brother? Or you just want to marry? You want to exit bachelorhood? You want to exit spinsterhood? And you are so selfish that you are not looking to see that you are actually capturing these dimensions. How about pleasure? pleasure your life must produce pleasure to your spouse your life must produce pleasure to your parents to your leaders to your office to your company you can't just be taken your life must produce pleasure to God yes all men are not perfect but your life must produce pleasure to God Finally, sacrifice, pray. This issue of having it at my terms, ladies, pray. This issue of having it at my will, no, sir. 
it can't always be the way you want life is not like that go and ask any married man ask anybody in a visionary relationship ask every millionaire ask any great man of god there are constraints there are times it will not go your way don't take it personal there are times it will not go your way sacrifice sacrifice hallelujah sit down what then is love seeing that love is not feeling seeing that love is not emotions seeing that love is not a beautiful face a macho six pack seeing that love is not a jeep packed outside seeing that love is not the ability to cook well in a lady seeing that love is not even the prayer favor of a guy what then is love for the rest of your life as you live don't forget what i'm about to teach you if you master this as taught by the inventor of love himself higher than any relationship expert higher than any consultant psychologist this is god's perspective of love number one love true love is a choice write it down true love is a choice true love is a choice it's an act of the will true love is not feelings when you believe you are in love then it is a choice listen come to sin the next time you say to sin i love you what you have said is to sin i choose you by the act of my will i have chosen whether or not i think you are the best whether or not i think you are the brightest whether or not i think you are the finest chef whether or not i think you are the most beautiful lady the most handsome guy the most visionary the most born again whether or not this business is the one that makes me become a millionaire fastest whether or not this ministry is the most anointed when i say i love you i'm saying i choose you it's a choice any manifestation of love especially in the context of relationship and marriage that usurps the will of man is witchcraft no matter what vision you see about what lady no matter what dream you have about what brother no matter what counselors tell you in the final analysis your will must be involved otherwise it is not true love write it down love true love is a choice a choice to be and live with someone in the context of marriage when you say you love someone it is a decision you have made to be a decision to live with that someone not a decision to live with the person look up if the person is perfect not a decision to live with someone if things are good or bad when you say jesus i love you now you know what you are saying jesus i choose you i have gone online and googled all the gods on the earth and i've seen names that i was never told but i checked everything and i came to you jesus for whatever reason i've made up my mind to go god's way for the rest of my life that's love brother I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Pastor Alpha chose Annie. He made up his mind that as far as this life is concerned, this is the personality who will be with me. 
it doesn't matter whether he's happy with her or sad it doesn't matter whether she's happy with him or sad whatever differences arise is not worthy enough to corrupt this decision brother that's love if you ever say you like a lady make sure this is what you are saying so as i'm talking now be checking what you are doing are you choosing the person for now or are you choosing the person some of you are about to ask ladies this week next week listen before you go to anybody and say i love you ask a very clear question have i chosen you or are you just choosing because of your level of exposure i suspect emeka is a doctor i'm not yet clear so let me let me say yes to him while i verify if i find out oh i i thought he was the one actually it's another face so i don't love him again i love you i choose you if a maker says i know i studied um, medicine but the lord is calling me and he's sending me to zamfara now your love is being tested you thought it was about a great guy who would be a consultant have his private hospital fly you around unfortunately you said you choose him many of us young people don't know what we are saying truly speaking when we mention this love thing lightly lord i love the assignment you have given me and then we sit down two years lord i said i love you and i love this assignment but i have only five members i have on, nobody's caring for me lord i'm on my way going after all i read this i can go and start extra morals and god says you don't love it a choice everybody say a choice say it again a choice ask anybody who has been married for a long time they will tell you there were legitimate reasons as to why they will feel they made a mistake in that marriage but every time they remember their choice that's why when you stand on stage with your wife they don't ask your father to answer for you or your mother to answer for you like rapture you stand alone is god speaking to us tonight because what i'm saying is very important I love you too much and God knows and sees my heart that I have an assignment to bridge the ignorance and the catastrophe that the devil is programming to happen between young people and young ladies many ladies who claim they love many guys have not chosen therein lies the revelation of these hilarious mood swings that fly up today and tomorrow a choice is a costly thing when you know the gravity you will not be hasty you will think well you won't say i am 35 i need to hurry up time is not on my side to choose that's why it matters who preaches to you to give your life to christ it matters what you are told if all you are told is that you come to jesus christ and all your troubles go away i believe in the victory of christ but brothers and sisters i've shown you the dimensions of love and there are times that some of those dimensions will cost you there are people who gave their lives to christ and they did not last seven days they knew that what they were signing up for was a bomb blast there are reverends in different parts of this nation who said i love you and with all the terrorism there jesus i love you and on sunday they had the sounds of bombs and they still got up and looked at their wives and said honey if i never come back let it be that i died for the one i loved and they went and were killed and never returned they got up that morning knowing they may die ha! who corrupted our definition of love and left it only to pleasure and that at our own times you may not like me for what i'm sharing but i tell you this this is the recommendation from the inventor of this thing a choice i've made a choice to serve god with all my life if donald trump calls me and says young man we want to give you a very noble position in america you're receiving a salary of hundred thousand dollars per month with anything you want do you think i'll run and leave you I know what some of you will do just hearing it although you are not the ones you will never come to church again you will go and cook food and bring for me and say remember me (laughs) 
Though man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Though man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Listen, this work of the ministry you see me do, it's not because I don't have options. Brothers and sisters, this man standing before you is, is a businessman. I think I'm quite smart. There are many other things I would have chosen to do with my life. Are we together? Yes. But it's a choice that I will stand and communicate the life and the power of Jesus. I never came into ministry for honorarium. Do you know, let me tell you, God is my witness. When I started ministry, I didn't know they used to give men seeds and honorarium. But right now, you see every young man quarreling just because they called him into a small group to share something for 10 minutes and he finishes, he refuses to go. You call him, come and play keyboard in the house of God. A small church that the entire tithe and offering is not up to 30,000. 30, the person says, pay me 20,000 because you went to a music school. It's a choice. It's a choice. That's why we must take care of our children because they did not choose. We owe a responsibility to take care of them. Even if the couples make mistakes with their lives, the children must not be victims of it. They didn't choose. Any relationship built by force and whose power to choose is taken away is an ungodly relationship. At every point of your relationship, the power to choose must remain. Listen, that's why those who abuse women are going to hell fire if they don't repent those who beat and when a man beats and slaps his wife forcing her to make a decision when a woman beats and slaps her husband forcing him to make it a decision when a woman manipulates her husband against his will like Jezebel into doing what was not willingly decided that's not love is witchcraft every relationship and every marriage must leave the willingness of the personalities involved sadly this extends right now in the days that we live even to extended families where parents and in-laws attempt to choke their hands and manipulate the state of marriages if you must marry my daughter or now that you are married to my daughter you must live in london or you must live in this no matter what god is telling you these things are wrong love is a choice and everything around it must remain a choice now let me tell you this this is how god helps people especially when it comes to making decisions you can go to god and god will tell you son i gave you the will to choose whatever woman you want and you say lord i take that will back by myself to you because i am not sure of my decision i know how vulnerable i am so justified before heaven that you gave me the power to choose i have returned it back to you as a token of my trust and god says now that's it you have proven to me that if i choose a wife for you it is not against your will because you trust me that's the only condition where you will see the dream and trust it and the vision and trust it not just that you get up and see anything and stand up and blame god It's a choice. Number two. Hmm. True love is understanding the value, the worth, and the significance of a person. True love is understanding the value, the worth, the significance of a person or a thing to God to you and to humanity true love is understanding the value 
the worth the importance the significance of a person to god number one to your life number two and to society number three the second definition of love is love is understanding value when you pay fifty thousand dollars to buy a car you park that car in a special garage because of what it cost you to obtain it now watch this come are you ready to marry this woman and take her as your lovely wedded wife you said yes they asked her what of you yes two of you and then just because she should she did not she was not able to give you a child listen carefully first month of marriage no child second month of marriage no child or whatever it is all of a sudden you begin to make derogatory statements two men cannot live in the same house so what you are saying is i listen i do not see your worth i do not see your value i do not see your significance to god to me and to society true love is understanding the value of things so when you are doing that business you love that business only if you understand the significance of that business to kingdom advancement the significance of that business to your finances the significance to the development of your society if not don't say i love it why do i wake up in the night and study and prepare for every message and labor through the hours is because i love god is because i love you i understand what this information will do to your life will do to the kingdom will do to your children and your children's children never say you love any lady whose significance to your life you have not perceived let me tell you this look at me everybody if you have any measure of success before a lady or a man enters your life be careful because the more successful you are chances are that you will hardly see the significance of a man or a woman in your life there are successful women who are collecting three hundred thousand as single ladies four hundred thousand as single ladies they are traveling to embassies they have snapped with presidents there is every likelihood that they will be bad wives you know why because based on their experiences almost everything a man should represent has been represented in their success so when they say they want to marry a man they find out that when the man comes and says my food say your your, your what are you crazy i stay in a hotel with 13 towels and servants come and give me this and you are saying i should pound yam for you you are reducing me they say to a village girl the best recommendation for such a beautiful sister is remain single and support the kingdom yes you will be more useful to god it's true that's why paul didn't marry if paul married only god knows the version of pain that the church would have received the wife would have seen her husband less than 10 times in his entire lifetime are we together understanding value i watch relationships and i see how the ladies devalue the men because maybe they didn't read certain things or they have not become certain things yet and you see the communication of devaluation to the men that's not love love is that i perceive your significance in my life why do i love god or do i really love god yes i have seen the value of god in my life Aya, for without me he can do nothing so when i say lord i love you and i seek you i'm not doing god a favor by coming to church when i come to church his word cleanses me and gives me an understanding that programs me for victory it's not a favor to god are we together it is because Vashti did not see the significance of Ahasuerus in her life. So when he said, Vashti, 
come and flaunt yourself she says so i'm now a property now i don't know what he has done but she has forgotten that that guy is a king over 127 provinces brothers and sisters let's not lie to ourselves that's a great man a man who is a king over 127 provinces deserves the honor of any woman who is wise it's true so she said well i don't know what you are saying you have money i have money you have the throne i have a beautiful face and he said off you go then it occurred to her that there are older options it was a choice to keep you the same way you say lord if i don't come for koinonia joshua selma you can't do anything and god will say okay i will raise somebody that didn't even finish secondary school and anoint him is dr paul Enenche that says god will use the calabash to disgrace the pot he will use calabash to fetch water so that the pot will see that that you are being used is not because you don't have holes it's because god is giving you a chance there's nothing called indispensable in this kingdom no there are wives that when they get married they don't care again not about their husbands not about anything there are husbands when they get married there are guys that when they say when a lady says yes to them that's the end of it there are ladies that when a guy asks them out and now they know that singleness is over people change and vacillate because there is no understanding please don't ever ask any lady you do not see her worth and significance in your life the danger is you will punish that dear lady and you will victimize her don't ever say yes to any man you know you will not be proud on based on the value it is painful to watch a guy do his best for a lady and she keeps giving an impression you are not worthy enough or a lady does her very best to a guy and he's communicating is not enough even God does not do that to you when he sees your sacrifices God acts as though he cannot do without you that should flatter you but it's true I search for a man a Jimmy the God of the heavens who made the heavens and the earth parted the sea with the breath of his nostrils is going around searching and that search came to a young poor small boy called Joshua Selman and he says can i use you to shake the nations god boy you can do without me i know i have limited myself because i love you i have made you valuable in my program that's god if you are married here or you're in a relationship you should go back and find what significance your husband your wife or your friend or your business means to you and to god i'm giving you a basis don't just say yes to a guy don't just ask a lady out don't just start business discern the value are we together yes i love our daddy here with all my heart i love him i've made a choice to love and honor him but i've also discerned the relevance and the significance of his authority his influence to my life to this ministry to the advancement of god's kingdom many of us do not respect our parents because we have not discerned when a woman is treating her husband anyhow what she's saying is i looked at my life and i've not found where you are valuable that's not a good thing when a guy looks at a lady and treats her like a piece of rag what he's simply trying to say is my dear i have not seen your relevance that's why it's dangerous to tie love to things like beauty and the rest because by the time she's 50 years old and she's not as beautiful as she was 19 or 20 or 21 when you married her now all of a sudden oh the guy was tall dark and handsome and now the guy is suffering from prostate cancer and he has to be relegated to a wheelchair and you are the one doing the pushing don't say job's wife did not love him now you know job's wife stood close to him she was frustrated she spoke anyhow but she remained there till he was healed now listen let me say one thing that is going to shock many of you we're rounding up 
the only part of love that is unconditional is choice hmm. you know we say agape is unconditional love is true but let me break it down to you not every part of love is unconditional the choice to remain the choice to stay with your wife or your husband is unconditional but the honor that's going to be the third point that i will give is conditional your a man is not going to sit down and live irresponsibly and then expect every manifestation of honor that is accrued to greatness it doesn't work that way the choice is what should never change are we together god has chosen to love all men but he does not bestow the same honor upon them it is based on their alignment this is god let's finish the second point i love you means i understand the extent of your usefulness and significance to my life and destiny that's what it means that means there is no shame of being vulnerable Ejimi loves his daughter she's there taking water and enjoying herself and he's there well dressed she may pour water on his shirt doesn't matter he understands the significance of this dear lady there are people looking for children and God has blessed him and he's not ashamed to be vulnerable there are mothers here who were just a few years ago young ladies but right now they have to run to go and breastfeed their children and they are not embarrassed because they understand the value of the gift of a child please don't get into any relationship where there is no absolute revelation of the value of the person you are bringing in your life abuse is a product of lack of discerning value whether to a woman or to a man a man that beats his wife is not just an ungodly man he's a man who does not love her do you know why because he has not discerned her value if i told you this watch was for instance three hundred thousand, right i have placed value on it and say i'm wearing on my hands an object that is three hundred thousand worth of gold and then if i remove it and give you will you forget it on a chair please talk to me you will protect it your protection is a revelation of the value and what it can do to you that you can remove this watch and run to Kano black market and make over three hundred and sixty thousand from this watch and so if i give you you say thank you if sam tears a piece of paper from his book and gives you you may forget it on the ground that's exactly the revelation you give in the way you treat your children so when a man has five children and does not take care of them what he's saying is i don't think any of you will be useful in this life so there is no point being committed to your future the subject of love is one that psychologically speaking is a very nice subject that we love because every time we talk of love it gives us an idea of peace an idea of joy an idea of serenity and um, nobody wants to live in an environment where there is no love we have all kinds of definitions and ideas when i mention love to many of us we mean affection to many of us we mean sacrifice to many of us we mean god to many of us we mean brotherly kindness and a sense of benevolence and brotherhood but i'm going to be guiding us towards a common thought i want us to really examine it from the perspective that i'll be revealing to us praise the lord very 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 important there are many things the bible has to say about love scattered from genesis to revelation especially in the epistles the gospels and the epistles contain the highest thoughts on love jesus himself speaking about it and then apostle paul admonishing the churches about love especially the church in corinth apostle john too john the beloved spoke a lot in his epistles about love and and there are so many things that the bible says about love but then i want us to consider three very important 
things that the Bible has to say about love. Praise the Lord. This message will bless you tonight. The first thing the Bible lets us know is that God is love. Say after me, God is love. Shout it one more time. God is love. It's very interesting because the Bible does not say God has love. It doesn't say God possesses love. It says God is love. Hallelujah. The first point that I want you to know tonight is that God is love. And the meaning of that is that the measure of your love life is also the measure of God that is finding expression in you. The measure of your love life is the exact measure of God that is finding expression in you and through you to others. God is love. Absolutely important. First John chapter 4, please help us. First John chapter 4 verse 8. We are going to look at um, four verses. We will look at verse 8, verse 16, and then 20 and 21. First John chapter 4. Let's look at the epistle of John chapter 4 from verse 8. Then we'll jump to 16 and then 20 and then 21. Everyone please read. It's projected. One to read. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Uh huh. For God is love. Let's just hold on here. It's, it's very, very instructive. It says, He that cannot love, no matter how he claims to know God, he does not know God. Are we together? Your knowledge of God is not even measured by how much revelation you have. Listen. Your knowledge of God is not measured by how much Greek and Hebrew words. The apostle, and you know, John understood what he was saying because he was the apostle of love. The beloved. Are we together? And here John is saying, if you want to know your measure, the measure to which you truly know God, you don't check it by how much theological accolades you have or how much wheelchairs you've been able to lift up. He says the true measure of your knowledge of God is love. Love. He says for God is love. Let's look at verse 16. Shabba katabaya. Verse 16. He says and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love does what? Dwells in God and God in him. Now please follow me very carefully. The Bible says whoever dwells in love it doesn't just say whoever loves. Whoever dwells in that realm where you cannot but love. It says he dwells in God and God dwells in him. Are we together? Verse 20 and 21. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother. What is the verdict? Read it yourself. So if Joshua Selman says, I love God and hated his brother, Joshua Selman is a liar. No matter how impolite it sounds, that's the truth of God's word. If you say, I love God, whether as a man of God, as a young man, as an old person, as a parent, whatever you are, he says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. He says, for he that loveth not his brother whom he can see are we together he says how can he love god whom he hath not seen and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth god loveth his brother also 21 okay that, that's that's it there he says he who loveth god should do what love his brother also let me tell you something. I think this is probably one area where Satan has cheated believers more than anything. There have been areas where we have allowed Satan to take advantage, maybe 
in refusing to open up ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, in creating a lot of imbalance like I taught earlier, but I think the chiefest of the tools that Satan has used to destroy us is this understanding of God's idea and the relevance and the necessity to love one another. In fact, Jesus said this. He says, by this shall all men, regardless of who they are, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. He says, when you have love one for another, not when you pray in tongues, not when you heal the sick, by this, this very act is the ultimate test that the love of God dwells in you when you have love one for another. Are we together? So the measure of your knowledge of God, the measure of your intimacy with God is the measure of the love you have. Not just for him, but your fellow people. Never tell me you love God when you hate men. Never tell me you love God when you love only those who like you. Never tell me you love God. You know, the interesting thing about it is God does not tell us the kinds of people to love. He tells us to love all men. It is absolutely logical to love those who matter to you. It is absolutely logical to love those who you benefit from. But the Bible's idea of love is that the closer you get to God, please hear me, all your praying in tongues, all your fasting, all your spiritual activity are like different channels headed to the same point to get you to that point where you grow and you are established experientially in the love of God. Are we together? So the first revelation is that love the measure of your knowledge of God is a measure of your love for people. There are very few Christians who really love people. There are many Christians who love power. There are many Christians who love ministry. There are many Christians who love ladies who they want to marry. Are we together? There are many people who love their business partners. There are many people who love their parents or their relatives. I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about living in a realm where nothing else can find expression in you outside of love. Some of us have so dwelled in hate, we do not even know such a realm is possible. And if possible, are there people living in such a reality today? Are we together? That's the first revelation that we need to have. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God. Nobody can say I love God and hate his brother and hate his sister. Regardless of what the justification for the hatred is. The Bible says he that does not love his brother does not love God. It's as simple as that. The second thing I want you to know tonight is that the Bible calls love a more excellent way. Hmm. It calls love a more excellent way. There are excellent ways and the Bible shows us many remarkable things that a believer can do in this kingdom. Give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read from, we'll read verse 31 and then we'll read chapter 13, verse 13. Chapter 12, 31 and then 13, verse 13. While they attempt to pull this up, okay, it's up, it's up already. Watch this. I hope you know, theologically speaking, that the church in Corinth, um, they were the believers who opened us up to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Are we together? Yeah. In fact, they did not even know that what was happening to them was called prophecy or word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Are we together? Or discerning of spirits. There was such an outpouring of the power of the Holy Ghost upon that church. People were prophesying manifold possibilities manifesting from people. 
to a point that it was even bringing chaos. You can imagine a church where the usher is as powerful enough to be called a bishop. Prophecies, healings, miracles. Paul had to come and observe what was happening. And then by his apostolic grace began to write and guide them. And say, look, 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 look. Let me classify this and help you know that this and that and that and that. And the interesting thing is that after Paul teaches them about what we all covet, the gift of the spirit. We read books by Smith Wigglesworth. We read God's generals. Are we together? We run helter skelter searching for men and apostles and prophets and great people to impart upon us fresh fire as we call it so that we can do great things for the kingdom. But hear what the Bible says. After Paul gives them the whole exegesis of the workings of the spirit, he says, but covet what? Earnestly, passionately, desperately. The best gifts and then he tells them, I want to show you something. He says, and yet, even when you have what you call the best gifts, I show you a more excellent way. Are we together? Now, Paul is telling them, look guys, I know that. Have you seen people arguing, let's say people arguing uh, in primary school, maybe on a mathematical problem, and they are coming to say, no, 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 no. One minus one is it cannot. Our teacher taught us and you are trying to correct the person. But you know that even that knowledge itself is limited. Because if the person goes higher, he will learn that there's something called number line. Are we together? At that level, he may not know that such a reality exists. So if he writes my, one minus two, he will write it cannot and you will mark him correct. Paul says, compared to what I want to show you, even this gift of the spirit thing that you are arguing with, if I show you this higher thing, you will almost throw away the gifts to embrace what I'm about to show you. It says, yet I show you a more excellent way. Let's read 13 verse 1 before we go to verse 13. Just give us verse 1, media, then we'll go to verse 13. 13 verse 1. Everyone read, please. One, two, read. And have not... Well, the word charity, there's the word love. I am become what? As a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Listen, the Bible says, though I speak with the tongues of men, utterance, you get to a point where you are such, you are such an orator. You can communicate in every language. You can communicate intellectually. And it says, even the tongues of angels, access to communications, utterances that are not of the earth. He says, as powerful as that is, there is no man on earth who has attained this state. But he says, even if you get to this state and you do not have love, from God's perspective, he says, you are like a clinging symbol. Let's read verse 2. Maybe we'll read it down to verse 3 and then we'll jump to verse 13. Verse 2. 13 verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, our generation is looking for this desperately because this looks like the, the Sabbath day of ministry, when you get into the realm where you can prophesy, no matter what you know about finances or not, you'll be rich. No matter how organized, excellent, or the excellent you are, the prophetic will seem to cover up everything. So this is what we all look for. We fast and pray for it. I can't tell you how many people, um, I remember a gentleman sending me a text some months ago and said, man of God. No, no, no. He said, uh, my father, my father, open my eyes. I said, I'm not a herbalist. I remember the text. I mean, I think it was after one miracle service. He said, open my eyes, you know. <laughs> you can imagine I receive all kinds of things from people. But he says, even if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, the things we are talking about and all knowledge and though i have all faith no man has attained this realm so that i could remove mountains ah it says but if i do not have love what are you now when god speaks it's important to listen when god tells you you are nothing just because you do not have love pay attention to it we all want to be something and God is showing us how to be something. He's saying these things you are seeking, 
they are only relevant when you have love if you do not have love in the realm of the spirit you are not small you are nothing nothing in mathematics is zero correct zero plus anything is equal to that thing zero doesn't add to anything are we together zero times anything reduces it to zero and it says if i have all these great things but have no love i am nothing let's go to verse 13. Hmm. it says and now abided what faith the faith that moves mountains the hope that maketh not ashamed and the Bible says, love, replace the word charity with love. It says, these three are important for the relevance of a man. But it says, the greatest of these is what? Love. Don't say charity, love. The greatest of these is love. The Bible says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yet it says, even with it, God is more pleased with a man. If you are walking in love. And I'm not talking about loving God today. Many people do already. I'm talking of loving your neighbor. Loving your fellow man. A subtle but powerful key. That is responsible for the manifestation of God's possibilities in men. Love is the more excellent way. The Bible says this. Love is the more excellent way. The third thing I want to share with us tonight about love that has blessed me so much is in 1 Corinthians 13, same chapter, verse 8. And I pray that this revelation will bless you the way it has blessed me. Love never fails. Love never fails fails please look up everybody the first three words one to read love never fails look up when was the last time they taught you about love as part of the keys that can give you a fail proof destiny whenever they are teaching you about fail proof things they teach you that tithing is a fail proof key are we together but nobody seems to talk about love yet the Bible, look, even faith can fail. I hope you know. Faith can fail. Jesus himself revealed to us that faith can fail. He said, get deep behind me, Peter. Satan. And he says, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted... When you return back to faith, strengthen your brethren. Teach them that their faith can fail and that it is prayer that keeps faith alive. When you are converted, when my prayer works for you and you come back in faith, observe this and teach your brethren that Satan can attempt to sift them like wheat. Yet, the apostle speaking by the spirit says, love never fails i show you a key that will empower you to never fail in life if you walk in love and you love men i guarantee you you will never fail if you are walking in love and you see something before you that looks like failure keep watching it something is about to happen there love is a miracle that can turn everything around love never fails love never fails if i do business in love it will never fail marriage in love never fails a believer that works in love never fails there is something about love not that you cannot fail you can fail but the love component will make you not to fail it will correct everything and make you succeed love never fails 
There are so many people who want crowds. Pastors want crowds. They admire men of God with so many crowds. But they do not have the love component that authorizes God to bless them with such congregations. Oftentimes we want to use people just for our self-centered, egocentric lifestyle so that it will be on record that this man of God is not a small person. But then the love for them is not there. I'm not talking of love for God. I know we've settled that already. By the grace of God, this is a house where we love God. But I'm talking of love for one another and every other person. A powerful key. Some of the most offended people and loveless people on earth are men of God and Christians. They love God because they do not have a choice. But I'm talking of love for your fellow man. Are we together? Listen to this and paralyze the hands of Satan over your life. When I was preparing for this message, the Lord asked me to speak on the one key that takes away love from people. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. We will dwell, most of our teaching will dwell on what I'm talking about. It's called the spirit of offense. Write it down. We're going to discuss the subject of offense extensively. And you will see why for many of us it's almost impossible for us to walk in love. Everybody say after me the spirit of offense. There is a spirit. Look up please. There is a spirit, an operation of darkness that comes upon men and makes it difficult, if not impossible, for them to have love towards one another. And the Bible meticulously teaches on it. It's called offense. Are we together? The spirit of offense. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Shabakato superataya. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. It's projected as loud as you can. One to read. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and all discernment. Uh -huh. That you may approve the things that are excellent. Read on. And without offense. How long? Till the day of Christ. God says that it is my prayer, the apostle praying, that your love will grow higher and higher while your offense diminishes until there is no more offense in you. Are we together? Offense is a terrible spirit. It's worse, it's worse than occultism. The word offense comes from the Greek word scandalizo. I want you to learn it. S-K-A-N-D-A-L-I-Z-O. Scandalizo. That's where the word offense comes from. And it means, very interesting when I was studying this, it means a trap. It means a snare. The word offense from the Greek rendition. The verb is scandalizo. And it means a trap. It means a snare. Are we together? So, a man that is living in offense is like a rat that has been trapped. You are in a snare. You are in a trap. You are unable to move forward. You are unable to make a lasting impact. You destroy your health. You destroy your life. And God cannot manifest his possibilities through you. Let's define offense. We are talking about love. What is offense? The root cause of lack of love among brethren, believers, people in any society is offense. What is offense? Write this down, please. Offense is an emotional state. Offense is an emotional state or response. An emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, 
comma, hot, anger, and outrage. Let me take it again and I'll continue. Don't put a full stop afterwards. Offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, hot, anger, and outrage. Right on. Usually caused by the words and actions of people. Offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, hurt, anger, and outrage, usually caused by the words and the action of people. Are we together? So offense is the name given to the emotional feeling, the emotional state that a person is left at. Are we together? By reason of displeasure the moment there is displeasure the moment there is hurt the moment there is anger the moment there is outrage that state leaves you in a state the bible calls offense are we together let me tell you a few very interesting things i've discovered about offense both being uh, let me have two gentlemen Oga jordan come promise come just stand, both of you, one here, one here. Thank you, guys. Anybody, just stand, one of you here. Watch this. If promise, listen, if promise offends Jordan, are we together? And Jordan gets very offended. Both promise, the offender, and Jordan, the offended, are both affected because the same thing is happening to them. I will tell you, both write this down being offensive and being offended has the same root and that root is self both being offensive and being offended comes from the same root they are twins self our self-worth our self-esteem and sometimes our self-centeredness. Write it down. Both, I mean, being offensive and being offended has the same root, self. What about the self? Our self-worth, we are offended because we think our self-worth has been abused. We are offended because we think our self-esteem has been insulted. And then, most times, we are offended because we are self-centered. Ah, you will be blessed tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Are we together? So, Jordan is here. Watch this. As a person, he has his, what we call, ego. Are we together? Jordan has his ego. Jordan has his sense of self-worth. He believes he's not a small man. He's not a small child. And he's, he's trying to protect his fragile ego. His fragile, uh, what do we call it now? His fragile um, self-esteem. And here comes promise. And promise seems to disregard his self-esteem. Let me tell you something. Most times... People offend us because of the frustration they feel as a result of their own low self-esteem. So they respond to it by creating pain for another. So that, you see, he said misery likes company. Are we together? When people feel miserable, they get, why are you smiling? What is it about the smiling? Am I looking like a clown? You see, the person usually is fighting something. There is an internal conflict. It just so happens that mistakenly you were the scapegoat that gave that internal conflict expression. So it looks like you were the troublemaker, but it's not. Are we together? A father has been insulted from his office. They told him, Mr. Man, 
you have been underproductive and we cannot even believe that you are a master's holder. Did you buy this thing or did you really go to school? And he comes back with that anger. Are we together? And the tire of his car goes down and his little son is the scapegoat at that moment who will give that anger expression. And he says, you mean you didn't see this? You, you didn't see this? And he starts slapping the boy. And you know that that offense, listen, it was never about tire. It was about a man whose ego had been insulted and he was looking for a prey to vent it out and it so happened that that young boy was the scapegoat the helpless scapegoat who gave that offense expression are we together yeah have you seen people who get angry and are talking and ranting and shouting at you and at a point you say calm down what exactly is the problem? I don't even know honestly. I don't know again. Because the, it was not constructive. It was a rambling, like going around circles. A venting of anger. And then they cry. Usually when they cry, they now calm down. And you say, what exactly is the problem? You say, see, my family, things are not going right. But you just told me I ate your food. So it was never about the food. It was a bad news that collided with food issue to find expression listen both being offensive and being offended all come from the same root self learn this i learned this and it delivered me are we together self if i think i'm a man of god great man of God, Joshua Selman. And all of a sudden, jo Jordan comes and seems to trivialize, trivialize my ego. I now turn and say, Jordan, do you know that, do you know that I'm not a small person at all? You see that? Jordan may trivialize me because he feels by doing that, he will reduce me and then feel high. And me, I'm trying to fight him to say, no, no matter what you do, I'm the boss here. Are we together? Yeah. Listen, learn this key and you will watch yourself rise. You will, you will look like a spirit walking upon the earth. Let me tell you something. We are largely self-centered people. You can call it selfish. This is an uncomfortable truth, but if you listen to it, and your heart is open, God will help you and deliver you tonight. Are we together? We are largely self-centered. So every time things are not done, the foundation of offense is disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you are angry, you are resentful. I expected this guy to come and tell me thank you. Jordan, that was nothing. I borrowed you 200,000. Now you have become a millionaire and you are looking at me as if we are mates, Abby. Disappointed expectations. Are we together? This guy has been roaming around me. He's not saying anything. He's blocking others from seeing well and he himself is not saying anything. I'm going to confront him today and say, bros, what is it? If you are not doing anything, get disappointed expectations. I helped this person. We did this business together. In my mind, I was thinking it's chop by chop and now he has left me. Offense. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you stand a chance to be offended. It is not unusual for offense to come. In fact, in Luke, I think at Luke 17, I hope I'm right. Give us Luke 17 verse 1. I think Jesus said something there. That offense will always come. Luke 17. You can sit down guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aha. I'm right. Go ahead and read it. One to read. He said to the disciples. It is impossible that no offenses should come. Stop there. Jesus himself is saying look. For as long as you are walking upon this earth, the opportunities for offense will come every day, every time, any time, at all times. Are we together? Because your expectations will be disappointed here and again. 
you will pay the school fees of a child and he will return back with a result that they will ask him to repeat and then in the PTA letter they will say they need to see you personally are we together then they will tell you the school fees has been increased from 50,000 to 75,000 and the boy has returned back out of 50 people in the class he was 46 or 47 then if you ever see him playing football what happens pain offense are we together mm. you got somebody to work for you maybe a house help or somebody to work for you or in a business your secretary and you say type this letter i need it in the next one hour and after one hour you come and see the lady calling a guy and and then she says, oh, sorry 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 my madam is coming you feel like slapping the person and you say how much is this guy going to give you we're about to lose something because of your carelessness offense jesus said it is impossible that no offense should come one key to overcoming offense is to know that they will always come don't expect them but prepare for them please look up i have seen pastors who cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball they love god they fast they pray but they cannot look at themselves i have even seen do you know there are husbands and wives that cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball they don't even stay in the same city how are you happy birthday i hear today is your birthday i see you didn't marry her he said yes how are you how are the children i hope they are fine ah is that junior in the phone let me talk to him junior how are you all right bye 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 and they drop the phone offense you ask them what happened they say in 1997 i saw one man with my wife and that day i said me is he offense let me tell you something the moment the devil wants to destroy you listen please he sends offense like a guy toasting a lady if you dare say yes to that offense you are in trouble the strength of satan is offense are we together every time the devil plots witchcraft he uses offense like the battery that activates the bomb you know how you put bomb and the remote control you stand somewhere and blow the place. That remote control is offense. You finish praying and the answers are about to come. That is exactly when you finish praying, somebody baths with your water. And you say, ah, who am I going to kill today? <laughs> who am I going to kill today? My hands are shaking. Somebody hold me. Call police. Offense. Have you not noticed that it's exactly when a miracle is coming that offense comes? Your husband, who has been a nice man, all of a sudden, now tells you, look, I, I just want you to know that we are sowing this house to a church. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. It was me too. It was the Holy Spirit. It was so hot in my spirit. We are packing out by tonight. And you are saying, what, what in the world is going on here? Offense. Don't laugh. When you just think status is changing, they just say your result has been placed. And you ask your friend, what did I get? Say, honestly, me too, I just checked my own. You know that there's trouble. They don't want to be the ones to tell you what is there. <laughs> Say, me too, I checked it in a hurry. Even me, I'm not clear about my own. <laughs> just, just go and check. Offense. Are we together? Mm. Offense. There are so many ways the devil destroys us. I was preparing to go and take my bath and the Lord showed me a vision that is very interesting. And I said I will share it with us. You know how women put towel when they are going to bath? Just at the chest level here. I saw chains on people, like hands were lifted. They couldn't come down because of the chains. And that's how people were moving. They couldn't do anything much. And then I said, ah Lord, what is this? I thought maybe God wanted me to minister to people. And the Lord said, I'm still adding to your message. That's how offense is in the spirit. They cannot move. They cannot do anything. Their hands are tied. Their hands are bound. A woman could not kill John the Baptist, but offense killed him. I hope you know it was offense that killed him. He was angry, locked up in the prison. The man who commissioned Jesus to ministry now sends a few disciples because there were, there were a few loyalists that refused to follow Jesus. 
And I'm sure they'll come to John and say, John, I'm with you. You are in this prison and I'm with you. Do you know how Jesus is enjoying at your expense? You are here suffering and he's there riding on donkeys and so on and so forth. And at a point, John could not take it again. And John said, please, go and ask this guy, are you the Messiah? You see, offense makes you stupid. You will do and say and be things that you will be irritated later on. Are we together? He said, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? Look at how Jesus overcame that offense. Jesus would have said, really? Tell John I'm coming. Let me show him that the fact that he baptized me doesn't mean I'm an idiot. Don't ever talk to me like that. I'm the son of the living God. No. Jesus politely and gently prayed. And notice what Jesus said. Blessed is he who is not offended. Because he knew what John's problem was. After he healed the sick, he said, "Uh uh-uh. Don't be angry with John. The devil wants to join me and John together. Let me tell you how Satan takes away destiny helpers from your life. Offense. People who you have been friends with for 10 years, the 11th year when the miracle should come, Satan will scheme something. Are we together? Yeah. A man of God who has blessed your life so much. The last service, something will happen. You expected him to call you and prophesy to you and he ignored you. And you just said, this is it. This man, I don't even know whether he's born again or, or what. That thing they are saying that he's using charm. I'm beginning to reconsider it because ah, I'm here, I'm looking at you all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it was my, my sister also last year or so. One time she said that I didn't used to prophesy to her. And um, they made up their mind that they were going to pray. And I think she was jokingly telling me that time, her and one of their friends, that if I call any name that sounds like her own, whether it's not her own, she will just come out. Because she has discovered that that's what some people do during miracle service. They just come out and they say, Why are you here? And since they are here, they don't go back. Say, I will come out to and stand offense offense is the root of bitterness offense is the root of resentment write it down these are the fruits when a man lives in offense you live in bitterness you live in resentment you live in unforgiveness you live in hatred Are we together? Listen, I used to think this is a very, you know, the interesting thing about spiritual growth, Ba, the higher you rise, the things you consider trivial, you will find out that they are the pillars upon which your relevance is hinged on. There is a level in your life, Satan will no longer try to use women or money or all these things to destroy you. By grace, you would have overcome that level. And you would think you are free. John the Baptist, imagine if a lady just cut walk to John. John says, are you joking? I ate locusts and wild honey for how many years? I'm about to die. It's you that will come and do the... No, 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 no. And so he used offense and he destroyed him. Do you know a time came when Satan was finding out how am I going to destroy the church? Then he looked for the two chief apostles, Peter and Paul. Are we together? And he was going to join their head together offense to the end that the gospel be sabotaged are we together one time paul wrote a letter about a gentleman called onesimus have you read it pleading on his behalf because his master was offended different things had happened please hear me offense is a trap by satan to rob you of your joy to rob you of your peace to rob you of your advancement to rob you of the power and the glory of god a preacher can never preach to people he's offended with imagine that i come up here and i say you people are not sowing into my life you don't even care whether i'm eating or not and immediately I'm talking, somebody's phone rings. I say, who are you? Stand up. The church suddenly becomes a military cantonment because I'm offended that you are not sowing into my life and now I'm venting that anger. There are many offended pastors. 
there are many offended assistant pastors are more offended than pastors there is even a nigerian film about that one mount zion film i watched it and it blessed me in no small way because the assistant pastors believe the pastors are chopping alone they are laboring and the money and they may be right but there's still no room for offense in any way offense does not bless the victim you have to learn this and this is more so for ladies let me tell you how you will know listen let me tell you how you will know that you are free from offense or you are buried in offense the ease and the speed to which you get insulted and you react to the things that happen to you right is how much you are vulnerable to offense there are people who get angry every time as you are right now in koinonia there are people already frowning their faces because the person sitting near you is looking at every jotting you are writing and you can almost say bros are you deaf i'm laboring to construct my points and you you just allow me to labor and you are listening and you write it offense are we together immediately after the grace another episode entering the bus offense this coin on yourself is he only can't they add some more buses had they not seen that we're increasing then another person will turn and say are you paying for it offense are we together then you turn to the protocol department you are offended they too they are offended in you several people then someone goes to the media stand harasses the people there they harass him back look let me tell you something brothers and sisters i show you a more excellent way you can live a life of absolute peace absolute tranquility by choice i made this decision and it has changed my life believe me when i tell you i cannot hate people there's something God has done in me. I cannot hate. I know you would say, ah, people have not offended you, Jerry. You are joking. How would you expect that I'm a leader at this level and have not been offended? I have done things for people. People have done things for me. People have trivialized my benevolence in their lives. You cannot imagine. This is my boy that works for me sometimes, especially when I'm preparing for miracle service. Then he would do something that I just feel, should I play ball with this boy? What should I do with him? And then I just look at him in his innocence and I know that the love of God is at work in me. Has your wife ever done something to you, those who are married, and you just, you, your hand almost lifted and you just took it back and said, ah, <laughs> what's that song we sing? Devil, I senior you. <laughs> offense offense is a cancer that destroys men there are many prayer warriors who cannot enter the anointing because offense will not let them enter watch pastors sit together and everybody is watching who would disrespect him everybody who is watching who would do this Oh, you came late, you sat outside, but apostle came late. They found a seat for him in front. What are you trying to say? Who is not anointed or who is more than who? Offense. It's like many of us are, many of us are like wombs that are ready to receive that seed of offense. Are we together? You are ready to take in. The moment the seed comes, you incubate it and it grows and it destroys you. i like you to shout, no offense. No offense. Say it again, no offense. No offense parents are angry with children children are angry with parents right you've heard me share a lot of things about my dad but i love my father with all my heart i cannot be offended with him no i love him with all my the, the generation of men that whole generation the devil really cheated them he sold a mindset for them that they received so it's not their fault it's a wrong ideology there are too many things in our lives brothers and sisters that can offend us from your roommate to your food to the restaurant 
to your lecturer, to your boss, to your subordinate, everything in life that has the propensity of disappointing your expectation can plant a seed of offense. But you must set a guard over your heart and make up your mind that I will not be offended. Let me show you one scripture and then I tie up a few things and then we pray. This is a simple but powerful message. Psalm 119, please. Psalm 119 verse 165. Psalm 119 verse 165. Psalm 119. I'd like us to read it together. Please look up. One, two, read. Great peace have they which love thy law. Uh huh. And nothing shall offend them. Hallelujah. God is talking about me. Great peace. Shalom. Great peace. Undisturbed. Uh uh. You don't get offended all around. Someone wore your clothes. Now, humanly speaking, that's very painful. Someone did something nasty. You kept your last meal. Someone came and ate it and you are angry. Listen, offense will come. I didn't say it may come. It will come. Even as I'm speaking right now, there are, you're going to have all kinds of reasons to be angry. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. But are you going to make up your mind that great peace I have I love your law I love your ways and as a result I will not be offended trust me I have I thought this was impossible until my life became an experience of it you will never I tell you this you will never see me sit down with bitter hatred and I'm thinking of somebody let me tell you something do you know what Satan does to you when you are offended he begins to plant in you ideas for revenge. The key, the proof that offense has eaten you is that there is a force that stimulates you for revenge. So Faustina did something to me and I sit down and I'm thinking, how do I hurt this girl? Now please listen. Different departments. Protocol department, listen too. Because you guys work with people. And you have about the greatest of propensity to being offended. And you can think, next week, how do I do this? How do I do that? No, it's bad. Listen, let people see you and see the life of Jesus at work in you. Sisters, am I speaking to you? Don't say I'm like that, oh. <laughs> you touch me, you touch fire. No, no. The fire is towards darkness, not your fellow man. Say, I will disgrace this girl. I swear, I would do something for this girl. She, she will run away with her head in this area. No. For a Christian who believes the Holy Ghost is at work in you, the question I want to ask you for making that decision is what is the role of the Holy Spirit in that decision you are taking? What role is he playing? You embarrass me, I will show you. Ah! Just because I'm silent, it doesn't... No, no, brothers and sisters make up your mind that you will master the law of love and you will see people sit down and plot against you and while they are plotting because love never fails their plot will be a waste ah put a jam for me on the road on 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 on, on the road as i travel and love listen listen the bible says the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest he dips his hand in iniquity quarter to shame you see love bail you out are we together many crises in different areas when the devil is about to spark crisis he creates an occasion for offense and that's the trigger believe me when i tell you this offense ah did you hear what they said about Ejimi? And Ejimi says, really? Jordan, it's me you are saying this to. Look, let me tell you something. Many of us live in a world that is not ex in existence. A world where you believe that every other person around is your kind. Nobody offends me. There are many of us who cannot be friends for two weeks. The lifespan of your friendship is two weeks. Anything people do, um sorry rose rose what's your name you don't know my name 
Me? How many times will I tell you my name? You are calling me Rose. I don't know who that Rose is, but I get the message. You have sent the message to me. No wonder you are not faithful. Stupid boy. Rose Abi. I will find out who that Rose is. That's the end of that useful relationship that would have led to marriage. Listen. Listen. Offense is a choice. I want you to know it. Walking in love is a choice. It has nothing to do with convenience. It's a choice. People offend me every day. Believe me when I tell you this. Every day. Every day. One time someone was ringing my phone around, was it 2 a.m. or so? Up to 30 missed calls, honestly. And then the person sent, I, 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 sent, I said, please, t- a text message, please. And the person said, it's an emergency. And then eventually I picked and, and then it was a lady and she was laughing. She said, honestly, a lot of things have been happening in my life and I want to share it with you. After five minutes, I found out that this lady was not saying anything constructive. I was so sad because I was in the middle of a deep meditation. Something was landing solid from heaven. This lady just cut short that flow. And I gently sent her a text. I said, please, next time, um, it's important that you, you know, learn this and that and that. And she just sent me a reply, thanks. <laughs> let me tell you what you would have done. You will call back immediately and say, see, let me tell you. Uh-uh, I'm the one who called you. Just allow me. Look, that if you do anything again, I know where you are. Where we have protocol that work with police. Uh, what is all this? If you want to throw me down, God has kept me for many years. You are the Jezebel that wants to throw me down. Let me tell you, your plans will fail. I'm even rebuking this. offense is God helping us this is where we betray our loyalty to Jesus because so many people find offense little things spark offense even during prayer you are praying and somebody is just shouting and you look and say what is this now if you are praying stand there then you continue Listen, gentlemen, I don't have only two eyes. Trust me. No. Offense. Are we together? When you make up your mind that you will not be offended, you have given Satan a blow that he will never recover from. Oh, hallelujah. That emotional state that has come as a result of what Satan has done for us. There are men of God who are very anointed, but their offense can be bad. They can be angry. They can stand on stage and I mean just lash it down at members and you know that this anger, this venting of anger is personal. Look at me. Let's examine for a few minutes the things offense has taken from us. And the things it has given to us, if any. Number one. Offense has destroyed godly relationships. I don't mean love relationships. Quality destiny relationships. Quality destiny relationships. There are many of us, the way we are now, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be long married, but offense regardless of how many times you have been delivered in miracle service the demons have left but that gate of offense has remained please hear me i've told you this offense is a sign that you are self-centered so if things do not happen your way at your time at your pace right offense is not rebuking people and correcting things and straightening things Offense is bitter anger and rage. The emotional frustration that is communicated as a result of disappointed expectations. I learned early in life that people are not me. I'm I'm quite well. I don't think I'm a perfectionist. I just am a thorough person. And when I see people who do not do things thoroughly, most times it troubles me a lot. Especially if they are complacent in mediocrity. 
I feel they are not taking advantage of the truths they are learning. And most times I will press it down on them. Are we together? But never to be offended. I created a strategy to use my disappointment as lecture halls. Every time I'm disappointed in people, instead of becoming a boxer, I become a lecturer. Are we together? And so I just turn and I tell them, okay, look guys, next time you do this, next time you do that, is the antidote to offense. There are many lovely ladies in this place whose destiny has been shot. Not because of witchcraft or whatever offense. You are angry at everything. And friends, you must summon the courage to calm people down and remind them that they are Christians. Don't endorse people's offense. Are we together? You never remind me of my mistakes. But you show me my destiny. What an awesome God you are. You're an awesome, awesome God. Listen. When you remember what Jesus has done for you and how he forbears with you, you will hardly have the time for offense. There are marriages about to shred themselves to pieces. 20 years of marriage, 30 years of marriage, now with grandchildren, but offense is stepping in. There are business partners who have been long-standing men and women of loyalty. They have survived every kind of storm, but offense is about to patch them away. I have seen great friends. Friends that you know God joined them together. Satan used offense to scatter them. Are we together? Yeah. Anything you do that is not in love, I assure you, you will fail. Please hear me. I assure you, you will fail. Do not say we are like that in our family. Do not say the village where I come from, everybody plus our traditional head is like that. Do not say my pastor is like that. I, I got that anger from him. Even me, I'm, I'm a better version of himself. Wait till you see him. That he's a pastor does not mean his offense is justifiable. Please listen to me. The fact that we are men of God does not make us perfect in ourselves. We are still growing. It's called an election of grace. If we are not arrogant to admit we are growing, then we implicate ourselves. Are we together? Koinonia, listen to me. If you want to be a man and a woman of influence, you want to host God's glory and power, you must love people. And the grand key to loving people is to know that the opportunities for offense will come every day. Every day, without fail. I we together. I was on my way coming and... While I was going out, someone just passed and looked at me and I saw the way he just frowned at me and hissed. Kilo day, what is my own now? I'm sure he probably saw what I was wearing and he just said, Nigeria, dollar is going down, you are trying to see. Let me tell you, there are many easy ways to be offended. One of it is at the success of others. Are we together? Somebody you know does not earn money and God just opens the door for favor. And she wears a nice hair. You just look and say, huh. a lot is happening in this koinonia. It's only God that knows what is going on. Even people who don't have money, things are happening to them. Both the one God is doing and the one that... You see, all those statements of sarcasm are expressions of offense. The moment you are offended, you begin to look for loopholes in others. Because you are looking for loopholes to trivialize what they are becoming. Are we together? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we banish offense. We banish offense. Look, free yourself from offense so that Satan will not have anything to hold on to you for. Whether you insult me, whether you do whatever to me, no problem. God bless you. If I'm sad, I go to God, I cry out my life to him and I give him all the praise. Are we together? Otherwise, you will hate people. A time will come, you will develop a sense of resentment for everybody. Then you will finally hate yourself and commit suicide and die. 
you will hang yourself and die. The hospitals are full of people under different kinds of tranquilizers responding to offense. They are in the hospital and the man's wife calls and his, his BP just goes up because he says, that's the woman, that's the witch, that's the idiot that is responsible for me being in this hospital. If she off that gas, it will not burn my face. Let that woman not come to greet me. People have died just because they saw people. Let me tell you, offense is worse than malaria. It's worse than HIV. Because the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. Are we together? There are many pastors whose true ministerial potentials cannot come to bear. Because the moment they stand on stage, five minutes, their communication is pain and offense. Are we together? At one time I was advising a man of God who was fighting with another man of God. And he said, honestly, that the day they will invite them for the same meeting, that what he's going to do to that person was telling me, I kept quiet and I allowed him. And truly, the other person really offended him. What he did was very bad. And I told him, I said, but will you win that? We said, Apostle, mm, don't come with this thing. Me, I'm telling you, I will do it. I will do it. And I looked at him. I said, you are saying this thing before the God who will keep you alive till that day. You are offending him as you are saying that. Yet his love for you will keep you till the day you will perform that wickedness. You are planning that tomorrow you will kill somebody. And you say, oh God, protect me as I sleep. I will wake up tomorrow and this will come. While you are praying that prayer, offending the most high and trivializing his creation, he protects you. You wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus. Let me tie my wrapper. Let's go to the neighbor's house. And, and let, let me tear this woman and let her know that I'm not weak. When I think about what the Lord has done in my life, I cannot but throw away offense. We are going to pray seriously tonight. I'm stopping early because we are going to pray. Are we together? When you overcome offense, sisters, I want you to pray twice. Every prayer will be praying once because that spirit must die this night. Say amen. amen. Offense. Love never fails. It's a secret of land. If you look at me today and you say, Joshua Selman, I promise you, I will destroy you. Let me tell you what Satan does. For that prophecy to work, offense needs to be triggered. If offense is triggered, meaning I look at you and I say, really, you want to destroy me. You have drawn the line. Offense. The moment offense is ready to detonate that bomb. Boom. And two of you will die. That's the painful part. So the moment you say that, I go back and I say, no, I love this sister. I love this brother. Lord, I love Oga Jordan. He's done something stupid, but I love him. And while you are saying that, your entire flesh is saying you are joking. I don't agree with you. And you tell it, remain there. I'm speaking. You must conform. Listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to beat your body down and force it in alignment and in obedience. One of the greatest ways to walk in love is to verbalize it, calling the names of the people who have offended you. Oh, I love my music director. He shouted at me yesterday, but I love him. I love him with all my heart. I love him with all my heart. We are a team. Oh, the protocol took my seat and they gave another person. No, I refuse to be offended. There is love in this ministry. I love the protocol. I love Shadrach. I love all of them. And the devil is saying, do you really love the pain that is killing you there? That's how you get it out. Listen, every plot of Satan depends on offense to be triggered. Don't trigger it. You've been triggering a lot of things in your life through offense. A brother calls you and he says, see, is it because I'm trying to ask you out that you are behaving like this? Okay, let me tell you now, there are many other ladies better than you. Don't even come near me. And you, you now look and say, ah, this guy, no. I love this person. Your friends will say, that's how you keep doing mumu and be a failure. Everybody will be playing with you. Give it to somebody as a lesson. Let me tell you, the day you are about to give it to somebody, that's when Satan will cheat you. Because he knows that you are not, you don't give in easily. Now that he has gotten you to give in, he will capitalize on it. You will be sick. You will be depressed. Everything will be destroyed in your life. Offense 
has taken away relationships. Number two, offense has aborted prophecies. Offense has aborted prophecies. It was never John's destiny to die. He was a prophet that foran Jesus Christ, but offense killed him. Let me tell you what offense has done to people. Number three, offense has empowered the operation of witchcraft in the lives of people. Offense. You know why different spirits keep roaming around our families in spite of prayer requests, in spite of miracle service? I will tell you why. Because there is offense. Sister is fighting brother. Brother is fighting sister. Oh, this guy. He's the person who was who crashed the car that we are using now. Would have been any money from it. There are many of us for years who have not spoken to our brothers and our sisters. And families that are polygamous listen to me polygamous families mothers have trained their children so although you and your stepbrother are in the same territory you don't see eyeball to eyeball they've not done anything it's an extension of a war we destroy we end that war tonight in the name of jesus when you love people who do not deserve it you become neutral to the effect of anything the devil wants to bring through them. Are we together? Look, let me tell you. I don't know how many troubles in this life I have been delivered from. And it was not necessarily prayer. It's my refusal to be offended. I know what I'm telling you. Listen to me. The moment you refuse to be offended, you will leave the devil bowing his head down. Because shame will be his lot for sure. Koinonia, are you hearing me? Gentlemen, I'm speaking to you. Offense. After tonight's meeting, there are many of you that need to send texts to certain people and say, look, how are you? I just listened to a message and I want to tell you I love you. The person can send you a text and say, I rather love Satan than love you back. No problem. You won't just say, you see, this is why I hate coming for Koinonia. Apostle keeps making us look like idiots. Don't worry. I'm showing you a more excellent way. Be foolish and rise to a level where you become a leader. Do we love Jesus? This is what to do. Somebody did something for me one time. It was so painful. And then one time the person called me and said, please, I should help him with money. He's dying. As if he forgot what he did. <laughs> he said, help me, apostle. You are the only one who can help me with money. And I think at that time, someone had just sown some amount to my life. I think it was 300,000 or something. And the Lord asked me to give him everything. Everything. That's how I transferred everything to that person. He never called to say thank you. God is my witness till tomorrow. Now, look, let me tell you. If you ever tie your joy... To what people do to you you will frown your way to hell to hell not even to death to hell you will stop at death you will keep going till you go to hell i never listen listen i never bless people expecting anything in return from them i expect in return from god it's risky to depend on people for joy ah i've got peace in my heart Peace in my heart, peace in my heart all the time. I've got peace in my heart, peace in my heart. Sing it. Peace in my heart all the time. I've got joy. I've got joy in my heart, joy in my heart. Joy in my heart all the time. Joy in my heart. Joy in my heart. Joy in my heart all the time. Listen. Choose to be joyful regardless of your external environment. Don't come out in the morning waiting for news to make you happy. You will live a sad life. Especially now that we're in July. 
the journey is already unbearable for people. Those who are already pushing on one leg and not pushing on their knees, you will be angry. Come out of your house in the morning and see how angry people are. A bus conductor is smiling at you right now. Madam, you they go. One minute later, he's insulting you. Just because you are not going. Are we together? The driver is angry with him and insulting him that he should enter. Let them go. You see people fighting because of five naira, ten naira. It's my money, even if it's five naira. Yes, it's my sweat. Give me my thing. And they are fighting. Look, let me tell you. Life is too short for offense to be the code of your existence. You must learn to be happy. And in being happy, you offend many people. That's the sad thing. There are people who are angry. When they see you frowning like them, it's like we are a family. But they see you come, you are singing, oh God is faithful, you know, and they look at you. And they say, ah, what, what's wrong? What is all this? You are shouting too much. Keep quiet. Abba. And you are like, no, I'm just giving up. Please, go to church if you want to shout. You just leave them quietly. You already know that something is boiling. There's a volcano within their spirit waiting for expression. They insult you. You tell them, God bless you. Say, Apostle, should I really say God bless you? Honestly, say God bless you. Trust me. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Ah, you are suddenly trying to be a Christian. When you were eating my food yesterday, you are even saying God bless you. I was in Koinonia too. I heard what Apostle said. Let me tell you. Ah, God bless you. Leave them there. I'm teaching you very relevant things. Because Satan will test this knowledge you are hearing. Some of you this night. As we are rounding up. Just we are rounding up Koinonia. As you are going out, somebody will just come trying to greet someone and just push you to the wall. And the moment that happens, just remember offense. It takes from me and never gives anything to me. It takes relationships. It takes graces. It takes anointings. Offense has killed businesses, has killed people, has destroyed lives. There are many ladies here, no joy, no peace. You are looking older than your age. You are angry with everybody, including me. Angry. What exactly is the reason? Me too, I don't know. I'm just angry. Everything is, I mean, this life self. Let me even kill myself. Ah, if it will reduce the, the, the trouble in the world, please, at least go. Let it be that you didn't finish your assignment. There are too many angry people did you know over 80 percent of people who call me for counseling are angry with somebody why apostle do you know my elder sister can comfortably bring out five million and bless me and she's watching me in this misery entitlement mentality producing offense you are angry your sister is enjoying you are dying she's five blood pressure free you are high blood pressure full at, at age 22 you are already dying she's not do you know let me tell you something sometimes the people we are offended about are living in a world of joy beulah and hebziba surrounded by the goodness of god and we are there dying you talk about them they don't know they will never hear it's, it's a bad business don't do that kind of business the business of offense is bad no returns whatsoever it will kill you ask doctors how many people get all kinds of sicknesses and diseases because there is no love please lift your right hand and say the love of god dwells in me and from today i love my neighbors i love my enemies i love my betrayals oh yes absolutely you've got to love them put down your hand god bless you you will find a lot of people saying so many things somebody called me one day to gossip uh, somebody somewhere said something about me and the person thought it would be a pleasant advantage that you call me called and say apostle I, I i shouldn't tell you this over kai i love you too much i have to tell you he thought that it would be something impressive and i laughed i said what is it and he said so 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 person said a and b and c and i just stopped him i said there's no problem. he said you need to hear the, i've not even said the parts that this way i said no problem he says, look i took the pain i promised him i won't tell anybody but i i said kai no 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 i can't i would do this and that and that i told him i said no you mean you don't want to hear i said yes 
Okay, let me send you a text. I said, no. He did send the text. I didn't even read it. I deleted it from my phone completely. Listen, you have a responsibility to keep your atmosphere offense free. If it means, if it means calling off certain relationships to live offense free, do it. Are we together? If it means playing a fool sometimes for things to just happen, no problem. Say, I will live offense free. Say it, I will live offense free. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Listen, let me tell you the advantage of living offense free. Number one, tremendous joy. Not happiness. Joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost, fully manifested in your life. This joy was so bubbling in me yesterday while I prepared for this. We had to play a song. I wish we could play it. The media could. Oh, okay. People suspected I would sing it or something. See them laughing. We had to play that song. I mean, I had to pause with the lecture and we took a two minutes break to play that Dietrich Hedden song. Just because I was excited. Look, the world is already angry. Don't join them. They are angry about things they don't know. And when they see you happy, some of you, whenever you see people shout, you say, God, this guy said, they are noisy. What is all this? No. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Truly is our strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. The joy of the Lord. It's time for us to get that lack of love and that offense. Pain and rage that has come as a result of that kind of life. Sing it from your heart. The joy of the Lord The joy of the Lord The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first benefit is joy. Number two, the next benefit of an offense-free life is a tremendous dimension of spiritual power. There is nobody I know who works in heavy dimensions of the anointing who does not work in love. No, it's impossible. Nobody I know, I'm telling you this. There remain at this tree faith that produces miracles, hope that keeps men expectant, and love it says the greatest of this is love and the antidote to a life of hatred and bitterness is to rid yourself of offense the anointing number three the third benefit of walking in love and walking free of offense is favor ah. look let me tell you if you make up your mind to not be offended you will you will experience favor that will even make you afraid Testimonies that you'll be afraid to share because you ask yourself, will people believe this if I tell them? He says, I will walk a walk in your days, right? That you will not believe even if it were told you. I will walk a walk. Are we together? Favor has closed away from our lives because offense drove it away. Offense. In all my life, I think the last two years of my life have been the most favorful years of my life. And it was within these two years, God began to teach me this. It was during my retreat, God began to teach me. We didn't talk of power. We didn't talk of anointing. God says, son, you are stepping into a higher dimension of grace, higher dimension of leadership, and I will need you to know this. And the Lord began to teach me. It came with a new light. 
I was ashamed of myself and at how much I'm, I, I, I don't consider myself to be a troublemaker. But, you know, leadership surrounds you with so many things that can cause pain in your heart. And I had to pray. I had to just pray and say, look, I love everybody. I love my family. I love Koinonia. I love everybody. And a tremendous dimension of grace came upon my life. And now I see favor after favor. It started like trickles of rain. And now it's coming in a way I cannot even stop. It's not all about prayer. It's about true love. As soon as I got down from the car, there was one little girl. She was watching me, I think, with her mother and another person. Immediately, I dropped. That's how she ran to me. On a very good day, I would look at her and say, Kai, go, go back to your mother. That's what we do to children and threaten them. I gave that lady a big hug. I was almost bringing her here to come and sit down with me because she said she wanted to sit inside. I just said, okay, one auntie, one usher should help her. But I was going to bring that lady to come and sit down to give her joy and expression please say after me in the name of jesus the lifestyle of hatred the lifestyle of resentment the lifestyle of bitterness the lifestyle of jealousy the lifestyle of rage leaves my life forever are we together before we pray we're going to do something are we together as we sing that song, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We are going to get up and we are going to walk around. Some of you even need to go outside. Everybody is going to give everybody a big hug. And listen, listen, don't stand up. Many of you like playing, so your body is already itching. We are serious here. We are not playing games. Are we together? Don't be offended as you do it because I know that offense will happen. Some of you will be tested right away. Somebody will match you and be laughing. And you are wondering, I say, oh, why are you doing this? But listen, there are people here you know you have not hugged yourself for weeks. This night, that's the night you are going to hug. And you, if they are coming to you, don't do as if you are not hearing what I've been saying. There must be forgiveness. There must be love. Generous, lavish love. Appreciate people. If it's someone who has offended you, I'm sorry. Yesterday I spoke something that was not good. It's over. It's over. I mean it. You are not saying anything that is negative. And nobody is too big to practice this. Everybody is going to walk around. Ready? The joy of the Lord. Stand up. Move around. Five minutes for this. The joy of the Lord. Go ahead. Walk around. Those following us online, hug everybody close to you. Every pain, every secret bitterness, let it go in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody, let that bitterness leave your life. Let that pain leave your life. Whether or not you know them, tell them I love you. I honor you. We may come from different churches. We may have differences in beliefs. But I choose to be joyful. the devil is a liar we must grow in love we must grow in love make sure you are greeting somebody hallelujah well many of you cannot go out so just return back at least you have two neighbors your left and right give them a big hug 
I know you think we're joking, but something is happening to people. Did you remember to hug the protocol department? Some of you don't love them. Look for them and hug them. Oh, you have to look for them and hug them. No, 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 don't come to hug me. Hug others. Hug others. Hug Shedrach. Hug the protocol department. I missed the boss last week, but I love you. Lift your voice, say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. From today. I declare that the spirit of offense will never find expression in my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray seriously. Pray, pray. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love, it says I am nothing, a clashing symbol. Pray, shake it, take it, take it, No offense, no offense, no offense, no offense in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Say in the name of Jesus. I release everyone I've been holding in my heart. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every person who has offended me, I release them. Lift your voice and begin to pray. It's painful but pray. It's painful but pray. Release your father. Release your mother. Pray. Pray. You may cry, but pray. I finally release my roommate. I release that pastor. I release that church. I release that ministry. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm ready to move higher. No unforgiveness. I release them. Shaka para takata. Eleke braskara bala 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 bala. E proto shote ke te 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 ke ta. They spoke against me. It was a gossip, and I got to hear about it. But I release them. Genuinely, I release them. Sincerely. I release them passionately. Oh, I release them. I release them. I release that brother. I release that sister. I release that pastor that I cannot see eyeball to eyeball. Hallelujah. Is God blessing us? I tell you, I see a lot of things happening to people. Prayer point number three. The spirit of unforgiveness and revenge. We are going to cause it. Because some of us, right now, we are already plotting how to pay back. It's devilish. No! You never pay evil for evil. It says you overcome evil with good. Lift your voice and say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of unforgiveness... And revenge at work in my life by the blood of Jesus I cast you out of my life lift your voice and pray no revenge no revenge no unforgiveness pray for your husband pray for your wife pray for your friend every spirit of unforgiveness every spirit those online, make sure you are praying with us. Those online, make sure you are praying. Every spirit of unforgiveness, every spirit of revenge, planning to rejoice at the downfall of 
Hallelujah. Hear me. Some of you are already waiting for bad news from your family members. Some of you are already waiting to, to hear that the rich people you are angry with, something has happened to their fortune so that you can rejoice. It's devilish to rejoice over the downfall of somebody you love. God is a God of judgment, but he's a God of love. Are we together? No anger, no revenge. Some of us, who knows that there are people here planning after Koinonia. They won't even go home. They want to brand someone and go and flog out something. No, no. Revenge is for fools. He said, vengeance is mine. Say yet the Lord. It's not yours. Are we together? Are we together? I'd like you to pray. You are going to ask the Lord to baptize you with a fresh love for people. Not just people you know. People that you develop an, a love and a sense of sympathy. That like Jesus, you can look at people like sheep without a shepherd. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Lord, compassion for people. Pastors, pray. Give me compassion for my members. I don't just want to be a preacher. I want to love people genuinely. Genuine love. Genuine love. Genuine passion. Genuine love. Genuine compassion. Genuine love for people. Genuine compassion for people. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We are praying. I want to speak to every leader here. Never use people. Love them and build people are we together don't use people and climb them like ladders to be relevant it's demonic i'm speaking to every pastor here and many who will be listening online there are many pastors who are wicked they climb members like ladders many pastors don't love their congregation a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep Many husbands are selfish and self-centered to hell with their family for as long as it does not affect them. Many wives are selfish and self-centered. The children would rather not go to school for you to buy a new lace. That's self-centeredness. Many relationships are self-centered because they have to do with people who are always thinking myself. That's the next prayer point. Lord, kill selfishness. And I want you to receive it. Brothers and sisters, you will step into levels of the anointing if you keep offense far from you. Don't hear this thing I'm telling you and then trivialize it. And don't let anybody tell you this is, this is food for babes. You are joking. You are joking. When you rise in the spirit, you will find out that this is solid food. It can rob men of their dignity. It authorizes Satan to destroy men. Are we together? I pray for you from the depth of my heart. That every spirit of unforgiveness and every spirit of revenge that is eating you up like a cancer and stopping you from manifesting and becoming all that God has destined for you to be, I command that spirit to live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whatever offense has taken from you, some of you have lost relationships. Very good good relationships that you may never get that kind again i'm not talking of love relationships good re meaningful relationships with people just because of weaknesses here and there some of us have lost opportunities god brought valuable people into your life but because of offense listen i want you to learn tonight that it is not all about you are we together ladies am i talking to you you have to learn this i don't know who who are those preaching all these rubbish messages all around and making ladies feel it is all about you no it's not all about you it is about you but it's not all about you 
Are we together? So that that attitude that makes you live in a kingdom where everything must happen at your terms. The moment your terms are compromised, you are angry. You are living in an illusion. It's children that live in that world. Are we together? I pray for you. The grace to be selfless. To also consider the pain of others. The grace to be selfless. To also consider how your decisions affect others. I release it upon you in the name of Jesus. I release it upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Those of us who are easy to begin to hate people. Just one little statement. You, you find out that you are struggling with hatred. It's like you are, you are almost a sadist. You can't find joy in anything. The lifespan of your relationship with people is not more than two weeks. Something must come and you will fall to it. I separate you from that kind of life from today. In the name of Jesus. And I command healing for people here who have been so hot. Now I'm not denying the fact that when people offend you, it can be painful. Many of you have carried these wounds for years. Tonight in the name of Jesus, as I pray for you, that wound must heal right now. I don't know who has said what against you or about you or towards you. I don't know who has done what against you or about you or towards you. You so resent the person. The moment you see the person, there is this arousal of anger. Let it die tonight in the name of Jesus. I release upon you the courage to make peace. The courage to make peace. The courage to go out of your way and make peace. And I pray for you. The relationships you lost, I call them back into your life. The opportunities you lost, I call them back into your life. The anointings and the graces and the dimensions of prayer and work with God you used to fellowship with. That offense brought you down and you are now so carnal. As if you never walked in that level of power. I command a restoration for you. Every prayer life that has died here as a result of offense. The moment you go to pray, the devil brings memories of pain and you can't pray. You are there three hours but you are not saying anything. Be free from me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Closely related to the spirit of offense. There are many of us, there is a spirit upon us. If you don't gossip, you cannot sleep. It's not that you don't want to. There is something in you. is demonic. If nobody has told you, know now that is demonic. You cannot be trusted with information. Talking to you is as, is as good as saying it in a radio station. Something keeps pinching you until that information leaves you let me tell you if you are suffering that thing here i want you to know it's an attack from the pit of hell especially sisters oh I, me too they told me oh don't tell anybody it's a spirit it's a spirit and it's killing you because god cannot commit a great man into your hands great men are great because of the secrets that they have you want god to bring a great man in your life and your mouth is running like tap God will not carry his precious son and put in your life. Same thing with gentlemen. God will not carry his precious daughter and commit to you. Are we together? There are some of us you want access to wealth. You want access to organizations and corporations. But your mouth, gossiping, backbiting. Your, your, it's, it's like you have this sense of sarcasm. You always see something wrong in everything. It's a bitter spirit. Five minutes into your conversation, you are talking about somebody. What you are saying may be right, but do you not have anything better with your life? I like you to, in one minute, I'm still praying for you, but I like you to pray and say, Lord, this spirit of gossip, this spirit that makes me dash down my reputation, let it live my life. It has not profited me. Lift your voice and pray. God, stop trusting you with information about men's life you used to operate in the prophetic but everything you see you say you don't know what is sayable and what is not worthy of being spoken pray our mouths have ensnared many of us you, you 
families you have sown seeds of discord friends good friends, good friends. you have cut informations that are irrelevant planted enmity between people it must leave tonight hallelujah the last prayer point i'll pray for you before i make the altar call is that in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that realm where you cannot hate hear what i'm saying not that you hate you cannot hate regardless of what offense comes it's a supernatural realm you don't get it naturally believe me i know such a realm exists i'm a leader i'm open to offense per second per second life-threatening offenses but in it he says great peace have them that love the lord and in nothing shall they be offended i pray for you may you exist in that realm may your family exist in that realm may your children exist in that realm from today i restore the joy the joy that left you the joy that left you that opened you up to attacks from hell let it be restored in the name of jesus amen and amen still standing i want to make an altar call i want to make three altar calls at once please stand first those who have never given their hearts to the lord you came for koinonia tonight and while i was speaking the holy ghost told you you must make your ways right with this jesus you've heard about him you've preached about him you were raised in a family that talks about him but you need him in your life you can be around the things of god and not be born again and in case you think you have been coming out here or anywhere else and you are not serious you want to rededicate your life to christ and then number three if you feel that there there are certain there is a spirit of offense and you think yours you really need prayer honestly you think that this bitterness is eating you up it has destroyed you i don't mean everybody but you know yours is an issue that is a state of emergency join all these three people and come and stand here right now those for offense don't be embarrassed stand this side and the rest you stand here quickly quickly please everybody those who give their lives to christ make your way to the front those committing their ways to the lord quickly the devil is a liar shame the devil tonight god bless you shame the devil tonight make your way to the front come to jesus those outside clear the way for them jesus is calling you you're winning you're winning you're winning your destiny is about to change forever i pray for you so many people have been hurt listen some of you are supposed to be standing here you may see some of these people standing and you don't know what they have gone through let me tell you there are people who have gone through pain that only god can set them free from only god there are people here who have been raped and it will take only god for them to forgive those people there are scars so don't you be the first to sit down looking and watching who is doing what uh -uh this few minutes is a time to mind your business and say lord i mean business with you let me start with those who are giving their lives to christ and rededicating their lives right say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i declare that you are my savior you are my lord i receive your love and i receive your light into my spirit I declare that from today I'm a child of God the hand of God is upon my life in the name of Jesus now I want to pray for all those who are here with all kinds of pains listen ladies and gentlemen I salute you I see some of our mothers here I know many families have gone through pain some of you are supposed to be here but just because you think you are embarrassed you are not coming out and I sincerely appreciate people. Some of you are crying. There's no point being ashamed of your tears. I may not know what story surrounds your pain. But it's time for you to be free from it. The Bible says a broken spirit dried up the bones. Say after me Lord Jesus. I bring before you my pain. And I ask you to take it from me. I hand it over to you. And I declare 
that the grace to forgive, the grace to let go, is released upon me. Lord Jesus, I pray that from today, the grace to love, the grace to be joyful, comes upon me. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for these lovely men and women who have come because they do not have the power in themselves to help themselves from this spirit of offense. I ask that you will help them tonight in the name of Jesus. I set you free from every pain. I set you free from every spirit. I command every devil right now that spirit of offense. I'm speaking to you. You are a spirit. You know my voice. I command you to let these people go. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I declare that you will not find expression in their lives again. Every heart, every pain gives way right now. God makes everything new for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, those who came out for the third category, God bless you. Just go back to your seat. And those who came out just to give your heart to the Lord or to rededicate your life, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. I see a few of you here. Please make sure you don't join those going back to their seat. Just follow that gentleman waving his hands and he will have your details. God bless you.